Assalamu alaikum shabab. I want you to be loud. I want you to be proud. It's time to be brave. Are you ready? And gentlemen of the Brave Nation, welcome along to Brave Combat Federation 34 in partnership with our friends WFC 24 live from Hala Tivoli in beautiful Ljubljana, Slovenia. My name is Irish Thunder Phil Campbell and I am joined as always by my broadcast partner, the OG of the mixed martial arts game, Mr. Kirik Jenes. Kirik, how important is it for us to be here in Ljubljana, Slovenia, working with our local partner, WFC? This show is goes to the very heart and soul of what Brave Combat Federation is. Every other promotion on the planet is trying to do one thing and that's put butts into seats. This is a different animal. We are not playing checkers, we are playing chess. Sheikh Khalid has a vision to raise up the level of mixed martial arts everywhere on the planet and right now we have landed in beautiful, incredible, wonderful Slovenia to do just that. Speaking of chess, let's dive right into our main event. We are talking about human chess, physical chess. We are talking about the vacant WFC heavyweight title. The big boys will be throwing down. Luka Podkrajic brings his 3-0 perfect professional record, a prospect in the heavyweight division against the veteran savvy of Vitor Vasic. What do both these guys need to do to walk away and say, yes, I am the new WFC world heavyweight champion? Phil, I see this one as exactly like Rocky Balboa versus Apollo Creed. This fight is gonna come down to, well, borrowing from one of your countrymen, does speed and timing beat strength and power? That to me is what this one comes down to. Can raw power defeat perfect smoothness? A real interesting wrinkle of this fight for me is the fact 
that Luka Podkrajic has never been beyond the first round. He has never been beyond three minutes, 15 seconds of the first round. Is that something that Vitor Vasic is going to take into consideration and perhaps try and drag him into those later championship rounds? Phil, we all know that in the heavyweight division in mixed martial arts, the big men don't spend a whole lot of time out there on the road. You do get athletes that run marathons, that run half marathons. You never get a heavyweight, except for one, that can run marathons. So, yeah, absolutely, that would be my strategy going in. Put the man up, put the man up against the cage, grind those arms down, grind his ear into the cage that's right behind us, see what happens in round two. So an intriguing prospect there with real interesting boy on our hands there for the vacant WFC heavyweight title. Moving right along to our co-main event, we have Ivisa Terra Trushik taking on Benoit, God of War, Saint Denis, Terror versus the God of War. A veteran is Ivisa Trusic, the current WFC welterweight title against one of the most shining prospects in all of Brave Combat Federation and Benoit Saint Denis. This for me has a little bit of feel of WFC versus Brave Combat Federation. We'll put one of your best guys up against one of our best guys and see what happens. What kind of bout can Brave Nation expect here, Kirik? Well, as always, you can expect a phenomenal fight. But there, there's always a story, and the story to me in this fight is, is Benoit Saint-Denis the next big thing? Because Everybody all over the planet is looking for TNTB, the next big thing. Our matchmaker, Yusuf Nasser, who is a genius, he's an actual genius, he has identified Benoit Saint-Denis as the next big thing. He had a little hitch in his last fight. This is his opportunity to prove he's TNBT or not. Benoit Saint-Denis, of course, undefeated in his professional mixed martial arts career at 4-0. Four, oh. four wins by submission, three coming in the very first round. But in Ivisa Trusic, you're talking about a mixed martial arts veteran. This is his 73rd mixed martial arts bout. 35 finishes, 24 in the very first round. How much of that veteran savvy will he have to use to get past God of War? He's going to have to use all of it. This is a man that can stop you with his hands, with his elbows, with his knees, with his feet. He can take you down. He can pin you. He literally has the makings of becoming a perfect fighter. I think in order to defeat him, clearest path to victory would be to turn it into a dog fight. Go nose to nose, start to throw, see what happens. There we have it, international bragging rights at stake, WFC versus Brave Combat Federation. The partnership is out the window just for that one fight. Moving right along on our card, and a feature bout, we have Jakob Neto taking on Zarko Sedoklevich. Jakob has a 2-1 and one professional record against the perfect 2-0 and o of Sedoklevich. What I really like about this fight is, if you look at Jakob's record, all his wins have come by submission. If you look at Zedo Klevich's record, all his wins have come by KO. Is this, boiling it down, a striker versus wrestler, a striker versus grappler type of bite? Phil, I think that's exactly what it is. Our sport, of course, was built originally to prove what martial art is the best in the world. Is Taekwondo better than Karate? Is Judo better than Sambo? Everybody now combines things, but each fighter still has a flavor. We're all ice cream. There's pistachio, there's strawberry, and what you have here is a perfect example of somebody who wants to win the fight by a submission, somebody else who wants to win that fight by knocking his opponent out. The one thing I'll say about that is it's a little bit tougher being a submission expert because he got beat up. He's going to get beat up. He's going to get punched in the face, elbowed in the face, kneed in the face. He's going to get hit in the liver. And when he taps his opponent out, the opponent taps, jumps up, and he's fine. A little bit uneven that way, but, yeah, it's going to be an interesting fight. Jakob, of course, coming off an absolutely flawless rear naked choke victory over Eduardo Lorenzetti at WFC 23. But in Zedo Klevich, you're talking about a guy who's not only undefeated as a professional, he was 8-0 as an amateur, a multitude of national, regional titles. So both these men riding high in confidence. For me, it's going to be a real exciting bout to see who the next big thing, as you've alluded to, is in the light heavyweight division. Moving right along in our card, we have the return of Phil Zilla Hawes. This is a young man who made one of the most emphatic statements in his Brave Combat Federation debut at Brave Combat Federation 30. Again, with a beautiful rear naked choke victory over Dominic Schreiber. 
what can fans expect from Phil Zilla? Will he try and build upon that momentum? Perhaps we might see a little bit of a striking. Phil Zilla has come to Brave Combat Federation with one goal in mind, and that's taking the title. That's what he wants to do. Some people come in, they want a career, they want to slowly build themselves up there. He is not on a march towards the Brave Combat Federation title. He is on a sprint towards it, but he's got a big mountain to run up right now. He does indeed, and that mountain goes by the name of Yuri. Terrorista Fraga, 13 wins as a professional, 11 of those wins coming by way of submission. Phil Zell, of course, a 2010 Juco wrestling champion. Will his wrestling be enough to negate the submission game of Yuri Fraga. Let me talk about Juco for just a sec. In the United States of America, we practice our very own kind of wrestling called folk style, different than freestyle, different than Greco. A lot of people know that the highest level is called Div 1, Division 1, then there's Div 2, then there's Juco, it's junior college. Some people think that that's a lesser title, but let me tell you, there are some Juco champions that are as good as anyone in the United States of America. In Philzilla, we are looking at one of the best. It must also be stated that not only is he a Juco national champion, he also wrestled a year at Division I Iowa State. So an incredibly dangerous fighter who potentially, with an emphatic win, could position himself front and center for a crack at Daniel Gaucho's middleweight title. Opening up our main card, we have one of the the most dangerous fighters in the flyweight division, Velimorad Alkazov, 6-0 as a professional, taking on the debutant, but the veteran, Zach Makovsky. Zach Makovsky has done nearly everything in martial arts, apart from have a crack at the Brave Combat Federation title. What kind of fight do you think is going to unfold here, Kirik? Phil, as I referenced just a couple of minutes ago, mixed martial arts was born in a desire to prove which martial art is best. There is now a battle going on all across the world on what's the better approach to grappling, sambo or jiu-jitsu. And we're gonna, excuse me, sambo or wrestling, and we're gonna get, a, a, it's not gonna end the war, but we're gonna get a great battle between these two warrior arts. There's been a focus on the fact that Veli Murad Alkazov is a 2016 World Combat Sambo Champion. But let's not overlook the grappling ability of Zach Makovsky. This man was a four-year Division I wrestler at Drexel University. Not only that, but in his final year, he was the captain of the team. So you cannot sleep on that level of wrestling. Moving on to the preliminary card. Is there anything jumping off the page at you, Kirik? Well, Phil, as you know, I am a huge fan of WMMA, Women's Mixed Martial Arts. I've been, to, I've probably been to 300 fights in my life, and cards often slow down, and when the women step into the cage, they bring it. They bring it every single time, and I cannot wait to see these two women bring it. Phil, can you hit us with some facts about them? We have Monica Kucinich Pitbull. She is 23 and one as a professional kickboxer, making her mixed martial arts debut. But in those 24 kickboxing bouts, she has 15 wins by way of KO, a two-time European champion, a four-time world kickboxing champion. She's taking on Jennifer Bulldozer Cleo, 20 and seven as a professional kickboxer, making her mixed martial arts debut. The vice captain of the French national team. This is either going to be a stand-up war or one of these girls has worked diligently on a submission game. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them pulled out a sub -carrick. Moving right along to how the bout ends, women's strength, upper body to lower body, strength to strength ratio, upper body to lower body is different than men's. Men's legs are about twice as strong as their arms. In women, it's four to one. So women don't have the same upper power body that men do. But Phil, do you think we could see a knockout in this woman's bout? If we are going to see a knockout, I think it's going to come from Monica Kucinich. As we say, especially at that weight, 53 kilos, she has 15 wins by way of KO. Incredibly dangerous. And Jennifer, her style of kickboxing is more akin to that Waco style. It's more a, a point fighting style. Whereas Kucinich, she's, she's a dog when she gets in there. Pitbull by name, Pitbull by nature. Kirik, is there anybody else jumping off the card at you you'd like to give a shout out to? There is. Bojan Kosed Nar, one of the things that Brave Combat Federation does when they land in a country is find a legend in that country and give them an opportunity to shine on the global stage. Bojan, first Slovenian fighter to fight in Japan. He truly is a legend here. He truly, truly deserves this opportunity to shine in front of the world. I can't wait to see him, Phil. 
There you have it, ladies and gentlemen of the Brave Nation. Brave Combat Federation 34, in partnership with our friends at WFC 24. If you're sitting at home right now, take your shoes off, because we are about to knock your socks right off. In 2016, a vision revolutionized mixed martial arts in the Middle East. It all started with the evolution of MMA in a small island in the Middle East. The magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain, a land of ancient glory and bravery, thriving under great leaders and visionaries. The country is now home to the largest MMA promotion in the region, Brave Combat Federation. And the Kingdom became the first ever country outside of the United States that featured the IMF World Championships. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his true warrior spirit envisioned the growth of MMA in the region. He believed in the glory of the sport of mixed martial arts and facilitated the best MMA facility in the land. Along with brave President the Hawk, Muhammad Shaheed, in the shortest span of time we grew stronger. We grew bigger. This is a story of the fastest growing MMA promotion in the world. This is the story of Brave Combat Federation. 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 T minus one minute and counting. Countdown. T minus fifty seconds. Seconds and counting. Minus 37 seconds, and our count continues to go well. Givia Ljubljana Slovenia! Let's make some noise! I'm the roaring lion and voice of Brave Combat Federation, Carlos Kramer. And we are live from Halatuli Arena as Brave Combat Federation and the WFC join forces to give you the most explosive fight card in European mixed martial arts history. Showcasing to the entire world, the millions watching, the heart, soul, and spirit of the Slovenian warrior. First, I'd like to thank His Royal Highness, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, our driving force, and the man who gives the support, the vision, and the leadership, which has made Brave Combat Federation the fastest growing global mixed martial arts promotion in the world. I'd also like to thank Brave Combat Federation President, the Hawk, Mohammed Shaheed, who tirelessly carries out His Highness's vision. I'd also like to give a huge thanks for our incredible partnership with the WFC and President Zlatko Mahik for our amazing union together. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. Are you ready? Let's bring out our first warrior to the Brave Combat Federation WFC cage. From Maribor, Slovenia, please welcome Mate. This first bout of our historic night is three 
five minute rounds in a catchweight battle. This fight is brought to you by Abu Dhabi Sports and Planet TV. Let's meet our first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of one win and no losses. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 88 kilograms. Representing MMA Club Center, Samurai Jim, and fighting out of Malibu, Slovenia. Give it up for Mate Club. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a special record of nine wins, ten losses, and one draw. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 88 kilograms. Representing TNT Jim and fighting out of Lupiana, Slovenia. Give it up for Marco Lionheart. Phil, we've got two guys, near identical shorts, both of them heavily muscled, both of them shaved heads. That's Mate Plavich with a blue tape on his wrists and Marko Dumonic in red. Two big guys ready to get in there and through down for your entertainment here at Brave Combat Federation 34, WFC 24. Plavich looks calm and collected. Dermonich looks ready to start with a bang. Touch your gloves and we are ready to go. Mate playing the outside, opens with a low kick. Dermonich throwing a couple of feints, just trying to get a little bit of a reaction. Dermonich stalking, answers with a kick of his own. Goes up high. German, it seems like he's just waiting for an opportunity to land a big right hand. Leaping left hook. There's that right hand. Plavic showing the, oh, that's a beautiful leg kick. Just chops it right in. Plavic needs to be wary of going to the well too often with that high kick. High kick versus a low kick, Phil. The low kick usually wins over rounds. There you go, now Plavic employing a little bit of the leg kick game. I'd like to see Dermanich really take the fight to Plavich, get into his face, show a little bit of that 19 fight veteran savvy. I think it's gonna happen momentarily, Phil. Oh, big overhand, just clipped the chin. And there it is. So these guys are starting to throw down a little bit, trading leg kicks. Those leg kicks are a real investment. Dermanich playing possum a little bit, had the hands low there, almost beckoning Plavich on. Dermanich back to his stalking game. Wide looping left. I'd like to see him put a straight right behind that looping left, Kirik. He's got it cocked and loaded. There it there goes. It is. Big overhand on the uppercut, following up with big shots. Plavich returns, showing that he very much wants to be in there and throw it down. The leg kicks seem to be a little bit more forceful coming from Dermanich. Mixing up the strikes is Dermanich. Charge forward from Plavich. Good back and forth action from these two athletes. Two minutes in, the what's already looking like a very interesting, exciting bite. Big overhand from Dermanich. He's biting down on the gum shield and winging shots. <laughs> Stepping in, I like what he did there. Went with the jab to the body, changing levels well. Big knee up the middle, on elbow. Dermanich is we putting on the pressure. We may be down to short time, no, slips away. Good awareness from Plavich just to use the sidestep to get out of the way. Lesser fighters would have shelled up there. Dominich really wants to find a, a home for that big right hand. Setting up with the lead left hook. Crowd really starting to get behind Plavic here, the man from Maribor, Slovenia. It's a very nice thing. Oh, we wobbled oh. him! Wobbled him with that big overhand. Staggered. The 
41 year old Plavic showing that he does indeed have a chin. Big overhand again from Dermanic. And knees again. Can Plavic get out this time? Oh, he landed flush with that knee. Nice work from Dermanic, really starting to put the pressure on the Plavic. Thought about the overhanded Plavic, decided not to. Oh, those leg kicks are really starting to take their toll on Plavic. You can see the marking up of the left leg. Little bit of dirty boxing from Plavic. Nasty bruise peeking out from under those pit bull shorts. Both these men just throwing wild winging shots at each other. Tie clench from Dermanic trying to land that one knee clean on the button that could put Plavic away. It's almost as if these gentlemen made an agreement not to go down to the ground, just winging shots at one another for your entertainment. I was impressed though, Phil, by Plavic punching his way out of that, punching his way straight out of that plum. Some nice clean shots from Plavic, but Dermanic replies with a left of his own. Dermanich probably going to put him in that plum again. Plavic probably going to try and punch his way out. Worked the last time. 30 seconds to go in round number one of what's proving to be a real intriguing opening bout. Spinning back fist attempt there from Plavic. See, the leg kicks of Dermanich are coming with just a little bit more venom. He's turning the hip over just a little bit more. Really getting that arc. Chopping down into the leg of Plavic. That's a nice shot to close the round from Dermanich. Round ends. Fairly clean round, Phil. Marco Dermanich, 10-9. I think if you look at the accumulation of leg kicks and the overhands that he was landing, what I really liked he was doing, and he did it perfectly and it landed at once, was change levels, jab to the body, and then come over the top. I would like to see a little bit more of that, try and crease the body of Plavic and open him up for that big overhand right. Phil, I'd like to see Plavic move a little bit more. He's susceptible to getting caught in that plum. He's susceptible to those big shots. A little bit more lateral movement, side to side, pop left, jink right. Could make a big difference for him. Squat, let's look at our, walk us through our Green Hill replay. Big shots from Germany's there, and you see Plavic happy to reply. Germany's throwing hands like he's throwing a fast pitch in baseball, but this was a clean knee. And then a beautiful little bit of dirty boxing from the Aikido man, Plavic. Again, the plum clinch. A little bit of marking up there, the left eye of Dermanich. Plavic down one round. He's going to try and turn it around in just seconds. It's on. Plavic going into the second round for the first time in his very young mixed martial arts career. On his first fight in the very first round. Does he have the cardio? He's coming out swinging, Kerrick. He's taking the fight to Dermanic. Again, Dermanich just seems to be waiting, almost waiting to counter with a big right hand of his own. I think, Phil, that's one of the tales of this fight. We don't want to, Plavic does not want to commit to that low kick completely because he's afraid of that counter straight right. It's taken away from his game a little bit. Stiff job there. Dermanic gets caught with a couple of shots. Plavic seems to be growing as this fight progresses. Take down off the field, knee attempt. There's a good reason they call the man Samurai, Phil. We are looking at a warrior. Off, perhaps land the of his own. Dermanich initiating the clinch, the over under position. They try and dig in for an underhook there on his right side. But comes over the top with a beautiful elbow. Answered with a big knee straight down the middle. Answered, answered. Dermanich needs to be wary of dropping that head down. Just took a little bit of a deep breath. He's waiting in with the head down, a well timed uppercut or a knee. Jabs are starting to work for Plavic. Plavic does seem to be going in confidence. I think the cardio edge may just go to Plavic so far. That's a beautiful leg kicking game. I'd like to see more of that from Dermanich. 
Plavich's straight shots are having some effect over Marcos, who tends to throw looping shots. I'd like to see Plavich keep throwing straight down the middle like that. Don't wing, don't uppercut, don't overhand. Straight down the middle. That's basic physics, isn't it, Carrick? Those straight shots are going to land quicker than those loopy shots. There's a nice uppercut from Thermonic. And again, again, we see Plavich trying to punch his way out of that tie plum, again with a degree of success. On Dermonich's right side, may use that to clamp down. Nice body work there from Dermonich. This also gives Dermonich an opportunity to catch his breath a little bit. Control his head! 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 Control his those hands. Plavich might have punched himself out a little bit there. Calls him in. Beautiful leg kick. He's starting to really hurt the leg. Oh, he oh. caught him with that. That could be a TKO to the leg kicks, Carrick. That's it. It's all over. All about the leg kicking game of Marco Dermanich. That last kick was money. Threw absolutely everything into it. Caught Plavich clean and followed up with some grind and bind. Kill that leg and the head will die. Marco Dermonich with the third TKO of his professional career. The first by leg kicks. I reckon we can attribute that to leg kicks, right, Carrick? 100%. Beautiful finish. Just absorbed the punishment of Matja Plavich. Dropped the hands almost. Played a little bit of psychological warfare and then just chopped in with that beautiful leg kick. Another one for good measure, unless it's the grimace from Plavich. Follows up with a little bit of ground on point. Very, very smart strategy, Phil. When he dropped his opponent with a low kick, he went after it one more time. A lesser fighter would have started going to the head. He said, no, I know what's got me standing. I'm going to follow right up. Congratulations as well, of course, to the Samurai, Mate Plavich. You have to give him credit for even taking the fight in the first place. There's only his second professional mixed martial arts fight against the guy that is now 10-10-1. It's a simple fact, though. If you can't walk, you can't fight. Let's send it up to the man himself, the Roaring Lion of Brave. Mr. Carlos Kramer, let's make it official, brother. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a way to start the night. This bout comes to an end at three minutes and five seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to leg kicks, Marco Lionheart Dermani! There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Marco Dermanich with the 10th win in his professional career via devastating leg kicks. Let's bring our next warriors into the brave WFC cage. <laughs> that was nearly oh, as bad as mine. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues with three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. This fight is brought to you by Brave TV and Seoul.net. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and eight losses. He stands 184 centimeters tall and weighs a rating 77.6 kilograms. Representing Trojan free fighters and fighting out of Pula, Croatia. Give it up for Tonsi Perusko. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 11 wins and 13 losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 77.6 kilograms. Representing MMA Ljubljana and fighting out of Ljubljana, Slovenia. Give it up for Bojan Zelva Kose. Your referee is Emiliano Carosi.
Eric, I think it's fair to say that the crowd are very much on the side of the Lukoman, Bojan Kozednar. Referee just clearing the cage, getting the cage door shut. Both these men are about to go at it. Here we go. Bozan Koyednar, red tape on the wrists. Nice leg kick to open up from Tonsi. 25 years old, he is 11 years the junior of Bojan Kosevnar. But with age, surely comes experience. Big overhand attempt from Bojan. Oh, just shy with that straight shot. Interestingly, it's Tonsi who tries to tie up and take the fight to the ground. But Bojan expertly transitions in the scarf. Mid fall, beautiful work from the local mind. Beautiful, he's got the underhook now. Scarf, very problematic pin without a jacket on. And he's already opened up a little bit of a cut on the left eyelid of Tonsi. You can see he may be working for a Kimura. We can see him isolating the wrist. Tonsi aware. Goes out for the, for the moment, happy to set in side control. We may see him go to knee on belly and transition the mount, but choose a scarf. May look for an arm bar. The way he has his hips positioned, he looked to be isolating the right arm of Tonsi. Cheeky little knee to the midsection. Preceded by a nasty little elbow to the other side. Again, I like the way he's switching his hips. The hips haven't touched the mat yet. He's transitioning from side control yep. to scarf. Tonsi trying to wall There walk. it is, got the figure four set. Wrist maybe getting jammed up by the cage. Oh, that looks tight. Doesn't quite have the leverage on it because they're so close to the cage, but Kosednar trying to bring Tonsi away from the cage. Nice work from Peruscu getting up to the feet, but Bojan just uses such strength in on the single. Phil, again, this is power. Again, transitions into the side control. And you can see there, Tonsi's already opened up. Kosednar made yeah. the Kimura again. Beautiful little short elbows. Tonsi doing the right thing by trying to keep that knee as close as possible to the hip of Kosednar. Trying to leave as, as little space as possible between himself and the hip of Kosednar. What he needs to do now is get onto his left hip, turn inside and shrimp, and try and claim back half guard. Kosednar just putting so much pressure again, trying to isolate that arm. Phil Zelva's got that left knee in very tight. Hard to get half guard with that knee on the hip. Oh! He may see He's on the back. Nice elbow. Big takedown from Kosednar. They try and get the hooks in. There's, There's one. one. Decides to let it go. Has wrist control. They free up his own left hand to try and land shots. But again, Tonsi manages to get back to his feet. Perusco looking for the standing figure four, looking for that standing Kimura. Double underhooks, we may see a drag take down here from Kosignar. Scope here from knees to the thighs as well, should he so choose. But Perusco doing a good job there to battle out of it. Phil, Bojan, clearly a physical specimen. There is a question as to how long those huge muscles can last in the cage. His last fight in October of 2019, he did go a full five rounds, so we know that he does have a gas tank, Kirik. Those five of his wins have come by way of decision. And on the single. Excellent takedown, fainted with the hands, drew his opponent's arms up, ducked underneath him, put him on his back, and this is where he wants to be. He secured the underhook and is going to be causing some damage now. It's begun. And he ran the pipe beautifully on that single, pivoted on the lead leg, taking Tonsi down with him. Beautiful wrestling from the local man. Again in that side control position. Happy to just land those cheeky little elbows, free him off a little bit. Again, working for that Kimura. And this time they're off the cage. The scope here for him to switch to north-south and maybe trying to attack that, that left arm as opposed to the right. If he can step over the head, that left arm's there for him all day long. I think that's it exactly. I think he is now in his favorite position. He knows exactly what he wants to do here, and that is cause pain. Looking for it. Potentially head on triangle. Let's it go again. All about those elbows. Tonsi trying to do everything he can to get that loose in the past, but we could be 
seeing the beginning of the end here, Kerry. He's not offering any kind of defense. Could be seconds away. Will he be seen by the bed? It's all over! Bozan Kosedno with the grind on point finish. Zelva the legend gets another win. Drinking in the applause of the the manic Ljubljana crowd here. Solidifies the position, landed some beautiful ground and point. Peruscu was offering nothing in the way of intelligent defense, forcing the referee to rightly call an end to the bout. You see Tonsi's not even protesting there. That's how you know it was a good stoppage. Heavy, heavy ground and point. It was that one huge uppercut that just came underneath the armpit of Peruscu that I think really did the damage. Peruscu's opened up, as you said, not complaining at all. Was wearing a little bit of a crimson mask there until the cut man was able to get in and clean him up. Doctor took a quick look at it, determined it was okay. Cut man now cleaning him up. The crowd is roaring in adulation. And let's look at our Green Hill replay. Here we are, we've got topside control, key lock being attempted. That submission hold, of course, can break the limb in a couple of different places. Key lock was denied, and there it was. Top turtle side control, huge shot, lands to the melon, and Boyan Kosednar is victorious. Well, let's take it up to Carlos Kramer, make it official. All right, what another explosive fight in this brave WFC historic night. This one comes to an end at four minutes and 55 seconds of round one, a TKO due to strikes for your winner from Ljubljana, Boyan Zelda Katena! Zelda shaking hands with the opposite corner, showing the good character that characterizes a brave cage and the right, Irish Thunder. Here with your winner, Bojan Kosednar. Bojan, what does it mean to you to get a win like that right here in Ljubljana? Uh, first, first, En mesec nazaj mi je moj prvotni nasprotnik odpovedal in ne moraš mu venega najdati prazniki. Tonči vzame tri tedne se bral pogumanje. V kolikor bi imel pripravil, je bila mogoče moja kriz, da je na tle, pa bi vam govoril v mikrofon. Vlač pa čisto hiter, zahvala sponzorom, oblačila Pitbull West Coast. Damjan Aleš, hvala v moji knjigi potrjujeta, da ste štarci dobre ljudje. Majo Shop, Murgle Center, kdor želi, Drugi, po moje največja slovenska zgodba v uspehu proti Vini Picassi. Ne vem, če se zavedate, kako kvalitetni proizvodi, po toliko godni ceni. Upam, da, ki povdarjajo, kupujemo domače, upam, da se tudi pri športi prehranjih daj odločite, glede na to. O, moramo skrb držati, malo nas je. In pa tretje, najboljši sponsor, več kot sponsor, tudi moji prijatelji, Autobook, Autoprodajo. A se bom prav obrnil. Po celoški do en paba, levo, pa pa prva desno. Najbolj fair avtoprodajo v celi Ljubljani. To je naša ljubljanska zgodba v uspehu. Mislim, da imajo akcijo. Vkolikor zadržite karto v VFC, pa kupite na sen ten avto, da vam dajo vinjeto za ston. To je to. Komu še? Upam, da nam kdo zameril. Pozdrav vsem fantom za zidovi. Vem, da so ljubitelji borilnih športov, da gledajo, prek planete vejo, navijajo in vem, da se bom malo zavlekel. Tako da upam, evo, Mahič, počak, tako da upam, da se bo te spaznik izmenil, da malo podaljše v del, kot klenjen. Mislim, da bo šlo jam v del. Evo. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for your winner, Bozjan Kosedna! All right, it's time for the ladies to take center stage in our classic third fight of the night. Special, my friends. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this third fight of the night is three. Five minute rounds in the 53 kilo 
catchweight bout. This battle is brought to you by Green Hill, our official fight gear sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the ladies to let the fist fly? Let's welcome our first lady warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. She's a mixed martial artist making her MMA debut. She stands 163 centimeters tall and weighs a ring 53 kilograms. Representing Team FKA and fighting out of Marseille, France. Please welcome Jennifer Bulldozer. G -O -O. And her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This lady is a mixed martial artist, also making her MMA debut. She stands 157 centimeters tall and weighs already 52.9 kilograms. Representing DTB, Sanobo, and fighting out of Sanobo, Slovenia. Give it up for Monica Pitbull Kuche. Your referee is Emiliano Carosi. Phil, I got a feeling this one starts fast. I think what we're going to see is Monica taking the fight right to Jennifer, not allowing her any time to settle into her groove at all, not allowing her any time with which to gauge and find her distance. No touch to the gloves, interesting. No touch to the gloves, no love in these gloves. You can see both of these ladies adopting an upright style. Very much indicative of their kickboxing K1 on Muay Thai background. Monica looks a little bit lighter on the feet. You may see her dart in and out. Bulldozer gauging the distance from her opponent, trying to use her slightly superior reach. Wisely had opened with kicks. Beautiful straight shots and finishing with the kick is Kucinich. Ladies and gentlemen, we are watching kickboxing with four ounce MMA gloves. Pitbull unleashing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, keep a safe distance away because we are watching a fireworks display. Look at the right eye already of Jennifer Treo. Some serious punishment absorbed thus far. Teo managed to reverse positions, but only momentarily. Over under position for both women, and that eye is swelling by the second. Big shots from Monica. Pitbull really sinking her teeth into this fight. Teo finds herself in a very difficult position, Phil. She doesn't want to stand and trade in the outside, and she is not finding the strength or the leverage to succeed on the inside. Nice little shoulder bump there from Monica, a la Mr. McGregor. As an Irishman, I had to get that in, Carrick. I make no apologies at all for it. A little bit of a quick separation on the fence. Crowd here, officials here, like a fight. Look at the power that Monica generates. Gauging distance, having fun, and catching Teo again. Big shots, she's dropped her. Referee has not stopped. Referee didn't stop it. I think Jennifer thought she was back in kickboxing there, was going to take the count. But this is MMA. There are no standing eight counts in mixed martial arts. You go out with your shield or on your shield. This is Brave Combat Federation, ladies and gentlemen. Big props to Pitbull. I think she was afraid she'd hurt her opponent. Decided to stop. But the fight continues. Pitbull wants to reverse, separate, and go back to striking. It's perhaps a little bit of naivety on the part of Jennifer here, where I don't think there's the awareness that she needs to dig in for the underhook on her right side. Seems to be happy just to stay in that 50 50 position, where I'd really like to see her dig in for underhooks. She doesn't want to give Monica Kucinich any space to land those shots. And I'd like to see Monica do too, is get a little bit of separation, get a little bit of space between herself and Jennifer. And Lando, there we go. Landing at low. They 
Can she punch herself right here? We don't know. Trio is a mighty warrior, taking everything the Pitbull lands on her face. Still in the game. What is Jennifer Trejo made of? Momentelli thought about changing levels, trying to get the takedown, but that right eye is in danger. A swelling shot carry. We can see it right in front of us here. I'm sure the cut team will take a long, hard look at that in between rounds. Referee breaks him up quickly again. The referee loves a little bit of separation, doesn't he? Step and elbow attempt from Jennifer Trejo. Kucinich looks like she hasn't even broken a sweat in there. That is why they call the woman Pitbull. Good knee in the clinch from Trejo. Thought about the inside trip, abandoned it. Nice cage control from Monica Kucinich. Again, the slip here. They're both standing very upright. The scope here for either to change levels and score a takedown. Again, that's perhaps a little bit of the MMA inexperience from both fighters. MMA experience, or perhaps they just love to stand and bang, winning or losing. Short time now. Referee making sure the fingers don't go through the cage. That is a great first round of action. Credit to both fighters. Let's first talk about the, the unbelievable power that Monica Kucinich is able to generate. All 53 kilos of her with beautiful straight shots. But then you have to give credit to the resilience and the toughness of Jennifer Trejo. You do indeed, Phil. I am equally impressed, and it's hugely by both of these fighters. Right now, we've got a situation where one of them's an anvil, one of them's a hammer, mm. but they are both tough and deserving of the highest respect. It might be within the best interest of Jennifer Trejo to implement a little bit of wrestling to try and get this fight to the ground. Because right now, Monica Kucinich, as we will see here in the replay, is running away with it with regards to her striking. Beautiful little short shots up here against the cage, and then boom! manages to get through the guard of Jennifer Trejo and it might be it's Jennifer Trejo ready to go Phil I don't think the round quite reached the level of a 10-8 round but that was as clear as a 10-9 as ever you're gonna watch and I think what we might be seeing here is a kickboxer used to covering up in perhaps 10 or 12 ounce gloves if you try to do the same thing in a pair of four ounce MMA gloves, you're going to be leaving gaps that, that your opponent will get through. Trejo back in the game, trying to keep her at distance, using that long teep kick, long jab, try and cause some damage of her own. Again, it's just those, the speed of the strikes from Monica. That pit bull is vicious, beautiful lead hook, catches her clean. Phil, I'm loving Pitbull's head movement. She's keeping that head off center, keeping her head out of the pocket when she throws those big shots. Nice takedown defense there from Monica. Go for the front headlock. Fighters tied up in the cage, probably not going to be for long. Officials here do break it up relatively quickly. There's potential here for Jennifer to take the back if she's aware enough. But she just needs to position her left hip behind the, the right hip of Monica, but decides to square, to stay square on. And there's capacity here for, for Jennifer to establish the, the double underhooks, but instead she's trying to frame off against, against the fence. If she were to connect her hands here, change her level, there's potential for an outside or an inside trip. And referee breaks him up. About to start rocking him and socking him. Phil, I predict face punching. <laughs> Is that your technical analysis thus far, Gary? My technical analysis of this fight. Big swing and a miss from Jennifer. That eye is really starting to show. Pitbull managed to keep her face completely unscathed by slipping that head just slightly side to side. Whether she's throwing a punch, standing just inside the pocket, that head is always moving laterally. Excellent technique. head movement as you've alluded to there from Monica 
He's got the head off the center line, was able to slip and rip. Bulldozer trying to try her luck down to the body. And there we go, double leg attempt. It was successful. of Jennifer Trejo. Lesser fighters would have surely looking for a way out by this stage, but she is staying and proving just how gritty she is. Big respect to the referee for allowing these two professionals to fight. Nice head movement to be there for Jennifer Trejo. Bulldozer stalking. One minute, down to one minute, Phil. Almost disdainfully shakes off a late kick attempt there from Jennifer Trejo. Oh. Slip for Jennifer. She's still very much in this fight. Pitbull essentially landing shots at will. Well, Pitbull may be wondering, what do I have to do to stop this fighter? Oh, Jennifer has the capacity here for the double underhook position. But chooses not to take it. She's trying to, to give herself a little bit of breathing space, give herself a little bit of time to fill the lungs. I've seen this happen before, Phil. You land, say, 20 or 30 of your very best shots, and you wonder, what's it going to take to stop this monster? Round two in the books, and again, very much like the end of the first round, we have to give credit to the power, precision, and accuracy with the strikes of Monica Kucinic, but also the resiliency and heart of Jennifer Playo. We're in complete agreement. We are looking at a 2018 score thus far. I'd be inclined to agree with you there, Kirik. And I'd like to see that guillotine attempt again, just to see the mechanics that, that Monica Kucinic was trying to implement. I'd like to see the guillotine attempt to watch that beautiful transition from a submission to striking. Green Hill replay coming up. There's a double leg attempt. And here we see the guillotine attempt. And as I said, Monica leaning back on it, not really getting the purchase she wants on it. And I would have liked to see her, as I say, get that chest over the back of Jennifer Trejo. And then the break, big knees landed by Kusinich. Third and final round, Kerry. Away. Beautiful kick to the body. Phil, I'd like to see just a little bit more of that from both fighters. I'd like to see a little bit more body attack. Just as you say that, Monica lands a couple of rib ticklers. Oh, nice check there from Monica. That hurt the leg of Jennifer Trejo. That lead leg looks like she might have a little bit of damage on it. Bulldozer slowing down just a little bit, but heart 
still 100% in this game. I like what she's doing. Every time she lands that job, she gets her head off the center line. There's also scope here in the clinch for both women to land elbows. Acknowledgement about that last jab. Bulldozer. That's what I'd like to see Toro do a little bit more. Set those combinations up. There's a nice double jab straight. Choose the clinch again. Get over under position. I think that's almost it. She has the scope once again for the double underhooks. If she connected the hands, got her head underneath the chin of Kusinic. Here we go, ass dancer. Hands are clasped underneath both arms. She needs to change levels and drive that head underneath the chin of Kusinic and get the trip. This could potentially set up a takedown, potentially ending the fight. Look for that sweet tripping. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that, just as Creo seemed to be getting in the position for the trip takedown, broken by the referee. Nice inside leg kick, goes low, then goes high. What is Jennifer Treo made of? Well, I can't believe what I'm, I can't believe it. It's Treo moving in. Again, Kusinich in on that neck. Does she have the awareness to cinch up the guillotine this time? Doesn't quite have the hands. Nice foot stomp work from Jennifer. Shades of Marco Huas. Highly unusual escape attempt from that. Thought she was going to headlock. Thought she was going to give up the back momentarily. Monica separates and again lands heavy shots. Jennifer Tao just eating them. Treo answering with some damage of her own. Stiff job again from Kusinich. Two minutes, Phil. Two minutes left in this contest. Spinning back fist attempt. And Monica has hit Jennifer with everything apart from a baseball bat. And the French kickboxer has just stayed in there the entire time. Bulldozer may have suffered a broken nose, Phil. Oh, beautiful counter shot from Monica. 90 seconds left in the third and final round. Trail's response to damage is to fight back harder. That's what we're seeing again. Again, caught in the front head. Again, Monica tries to spin out of it. Looking for the double. She can turn that corner. She could put her opponent on the back. Monica looks calm. They try and sprawl out of it, but drops down to a knee. They look to disengage here. Referee asking for a little bit of action. We could see a break again. Plenty enough action for me with a possible takedown here, a possible submission here. A lot of possibilities. Oh, beautiful back elbow. Monica seems to have the neck a little bit tighter this time, but decides to let go and uncoat a barrage. <laughs> 20 seconds left, and in the opening stanzas of the first round, if you had said to me that Jennifer Trejo was going to make it to a decision, I wouldn't have believed you, Kerry. Phil, I thought the fight was over twice in round one. 10 seconds to go. I see Monica try and blitz a finish. Jennifer ties up. There we have it. What a fight for both ladies. Props to the referee for letting that fight go on. Letting these two professional fighters fight. Serious heart and resilience from both women. Monica Kucinich with just some unbelievable striking. And Jennifer Trejo proving just how tough she is. I think we could be looking at early contenders for fight of the night there, Kirik. There is no question in my mind, Phil, that that fight deserves every accolade. Kusin is surely en route, en route to, to unanimous decision. Just let's look at some of her handiwork there. 
It seemed like everything she was throwing was on the money. Again, Monica just landing shots at will. A little bit of clinch work from both ladies. Yes, Jennifer may have lost this fight, but undoubtedly earns the respect of everyone sitting in here and everyone watching at home. Brave Nation, you are looking at a pair of warriors. Carlos Kramer making his way inside the Brave Arena to make things official. All right, Slovenia, are you absolutely kidding me? Give it up for these two lady warriors. What an incredible fight. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 30-23. Your next judge scores about 30-27. And your final judge scores about 30-25. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Monica Pitbull Kuchani. Unanimous decision for Pitbull. Irish Thunder, Phil Campbell, going to have a word with the winner. Ladies and gentlemen of Ljubljana, give it up for what might be one of the best women's fights in mixed martial arts. I'm here with your winner, Monica Kucinic. Monica, how did you enjoy that? You looked like you went for it right from the first bell. Tell me how much fun that was. Najprej bi se rada zahvalila vsem, ko ste pršel me podpred. Zelo mi pomaga vaša podpora, rada bi se zahvalila mojima trenerjama, Denisu in Hazimu in vsem res, ki me podpirate. Hvala Zlatko Mahiču, da mi je omogočil ta nastop tukaj pred vami. Rado bi se zahvala svojim sponzorjem, Autohiši, iMobil, Mita Komerc, Slačičarna, Cukrček in pravičujte, da sem še koga pozabila. A ja, najprej Pitbull Vest za vse obleke. Hvala vsem skupaj. Naj povem, kak sem se počutila. Že kot preden sem stopila, sem se počutila kot zmogovalka. Vedla sem, da grem po zmago. Sicer sem pričakvala težko borbo. Tako je tudi bilo. Čestitke moje na sprotnici. Bila je zelo trdna. Me je v bistvu kaj presenetla. Tako da res bravo. Tako da res še enkrat sem skupaj hvala lepa. Ful sem uživala in upam, da to ne bo zadnjič tukaj pred vami v Tivoliju. Hvala. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your winner, Monika Pimpel Kusani. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible fight. That is what our sport is all about. Unbelievable. And we'll keep moving on our historic night by welcoming our next Warriors into the cage. From Vienna, Austria, give it up for Mohammed the Beast, Mikhail! Into the brave WFC cage. From Ljubljana, Slovenia, put your hands together for Klaus Matija Vichar! All right, ladies and gentlemen, this next battle is three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. This fight is brought to you by Romer Crown Water. And let's introduce our warriors. Our first fighter. 
Fighting out of the blue corner, this man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of seven wins and no losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.7 kilograms. Representing Basic Sports Club and fighting out of Vienna, Austria. Give it up for Mohammed the Beast. Ma And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and four losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.4 kilograms. Representing Black Box MMA and fighting out of Ljubljana, Slovenia. Give it up for Kral Matija V. Your referee is Simon Spinola. Mohamed Makaev in white shorts, Matia Vichar in black. The 22-year-old versus the 20-year-old, both prospects in mixed martial arts. Who will continue their ascendancy up the ranks? Will it be the king or will it be the beast? Don't blink, Brave Nation. This may not be a long fight. Mohamed stalking. Matel Vicha, of course, trains with some of the most well renowned Slovenian mixed martial artists, guys like Marko Dermanic, Jakob Neda, Luka Podkrajšek. Charging forward, nice kick there from Vicha. Super aggressive work, just shrugs him off. The beast landing some heavy ground upon. We could be looking at the start of the end, Carrick. May take the back here. Works beautifully in this side control. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic transitions. Potential north-south there. Pops into a fairly tight side control, sinking the hips further now. Applying pressure to the throat, trying to get that head to turn, then we'll drop an elbow on it. It's one of those little microaggressions you see quite often in mixed martial arts. Just jamming that forearm underneath the chin, right on the throat of your opponent. It's not going to submit them, but it is going to force them to move or make them think about the pain that you're inflicting and not necessarily what you're trying to do. So it's very intelligent. Magaev wants the stand up. Ah, oh, this young man loves a scrap. Magaev trying to set his hands up. Gauging distance, fainting. Big shots being weighted in. And to think that Magaev has aspirations of going down to bantamweight. Vichar just trying to download a little bit of the data that Magaev's given to him. Mouthpiece slips out, <laughs> fighter puts it back on his own and comes storming back into the fight. Charges for it, and on a double leg, has the hands connected, will he be taken? Vichar for a ride. Yes, he is! A beautiful oh! <laughs> Air Beast now landing in the brave cage. Not only was it aesthetically pleasing, but it was incredibly intelligent because he took Vichar all the way over to his own corner. So now Makiev can avail of that, that tuition, that tutelage, that instruction from his corner. Very, very smart. Vichar trying to play the high guard game, maybe looking to throw up a triangle. He gets an elbow right to the Chevy Chase for his damage. Now it's time to work in the ground Phil, I'm liking how the Beast is constantly causing damage. He's not posting back and looking for one huge shot that could potentially end it. He's constantly damaging his opponent. Rolling the wrists. And it's constant, as you say, it's body, body, head. It's, it's chill, son, and ask, and it's in its frequency. Very adroitly mixing up punches with elbows. Needs to be wary not to overextend on those punches. You can see Vichar just almost playing the waiting game, waiting for an errant hand that he could perhaps stuff down for a triangle, or if Magiev overextends, may throw the hips up. They do like quick stand-ups here. 
They want to see him stand and bang. That's what we're about to see. Not the fans of the wrestling or the jiu-jitsu or the referees here. Oh, oh nice shot from Vitor. Vitor cocks the head. Oh, oh Vitor is beautiful down. Point. Beast dropping balls. Oh, that is heavy, heavy grinding point. How much more can Matja Vitor take? Huge what? props to Matija Vichar for surviving that storm. Serious work from the beast right there. And again, lands a big, big strikes. Hammer fist, and you can see just how much the beast is putting into these strikes. It's right in front of us here in our broadcast position. Referee taking a long, hard look at it. Beast slowing down his pace just a little bit. Picking and choosing those shots a little more carefully. Beast very wisely has his opponent's head jammed up against that cage. Takes away a big percentage of what you can do with that guard. Big elbow from Makiev. These shots are absolutely huge. Beast are trying to play that high guard. Knee shield in place, unsuccessful. Less than 10 seconds remaining in the contest in the round. Matiev trying to launch strikes from the bottom. First ride in the books. What a round, Phil! What a coming out party on the global stage for Mohamed Makiev. Huge grinds on points. And at only 20 years old, this is terrifying to think. He hasn't even reached his prime. He hasn't even reached full physical maturity, Kirik. Shades of the last fight where we saw a mighty hammer versus a mighty anvil. Doctor is checking on Matija Vichar, making sure everything's okay. She says it is. Phil, walk us through the Green Hill replay. Here we see just the strength and tenacity. A little bit of a clash of heads there. But this was beautiful. Matt Hughes, Frank Trigg, Makiev bringing Vichar over to his corner. And then coming to the closing stanzas. This was probably the most telling strikes landed by Vichar. Gets dropped with a hellacious left hook. Absorbs some serious grinding point. You've got to wonder how much that has depleted the, the energy bar, if you will, of Matija Vichar. Round two, here we go. Both men still look fresh and ready. Vichar fainting. Trying to set up what'll probably be a straight right. Oh! Spinning by kick attempt. That is the other side of the highlight reel. Oh, oh my oh. knee landed flush. Big knee to the face. Beautiful work from the beast. Just close distance, lead uppercut, and again. Both these men are throwing heavy shots. What I like is the little breaks and rhythm you see from Makiev. He goes down from, from first gear to fifth straight away. Looks almost disinterested and then just charges forward. I like seeing Matiev's heart. He's taking a beating, slows him down, not at all. That nose really starting to open up now. Makiev just stalking, using his footwork to control the gate of another flying knee. Just using his footwork to control the movement of Matija Vichar, making him move where he wants him, setting it up for that big right hand. Phil, looks like Muhammad's settling down a little bit, trying to set those hands up a little more. May, may kick to the body, may punch to the body a little bit, try and lower those hands, there you go. Spin kick to the body. I think he's going to try and get his opponent's hands down, then land the big shot instead of just letting him fly. And it's constant lateral movement from Makiev. Here we go again. There almost looks disinterested. Expect him to blitz forward at some stage. The job of Makiev has really opened up the nose of Vichar, forcing him to open the mouth to breathe. Perfectly timed, low kick. Very nicely done, predicated off the stepping forward motion of Makiev. Another flying knee attempt. Vichar is 
scheme as a badger. Fell in love with the hand touches. These are two friends doing what they love most. Detroit initiates the clinch. Good work. Gets the head underneath the chin. Very smart. I can see him dig in for a second underhook. There it is. Vichan landed some strikes of his own. Position reversed for Makiev. Trying to get in on the single right now, but needs to be wary of the front headlock. Breaks, and again, constant pressure from Makiev. Phil, I love how adroitly these two fighters are navigating back and forth immediately between a grappling game and a striking game. Some people take a little pause that refreshes. In between those two, there is no separation here. Down to the ground, and the striking is going to start momentarily. Another big take time for Mohamed Makiev. The beast landing an absolute beauty of a take down. Just setting inside the close guard now of Makiev, landing those cutting elbows. Probably need to be a little bit more active as we've seen the referees like to get the fight standing as quick as possible. Elbows are so clean and cutting. Phil, I'm really appreciating the beast setups for those elbows. He's waiting until his opponent partially traps an arm, slips it out as his opponent's arm moves away from the head, comes over top with a puncher, more commonly an elbow. Very high level, ground and pound. Vichar has a hold of the wrist, potentially may have been looking for a triangle there. He's stuffing it down. Watch for Vichar to open the guard, try and stuff that arm between his legs. It was denied. Trying to cut the angle. Vichar needs to open up that guard as he did momentarily. Makiev needs to square off the hips. He needs to keep his hips in line. Good work for Makiev to square those hips off. Matiev Vichar definitely creating opportunities to win for himself. Absolutely in this game still. There you go, referee stands him up. These guys are trading in the closing stances of the second round. Makiev waiting forward. I'll tell you Woo! what, I'll tell you what, Kerry, both these kids could work on Wall Street because they are traitors. Slovenia is stand and bang Ania. And the round ends. Fantastic round two, we said. The WMMA fight was going to be hard to top, but these two are trying their very best. Serious hard shot from both men. Incredible power from Makiev. A heart and endurance shown by the local mind. Phil, the beast, not even bothering to take a stool. That is a sign of the highest level conditioning. Makiev Vichar just standing against the cage, staring a hole through his opponent, ready to go. The Beast has very much been the aggressor in the first two rounds. But one thing you need to take into consideration, he's taken this fight on 10 days notice. Where was his cardio? He's taken it at a weight division higher against a bigger guy. Can he sustain the kind of pressure that he's been putting on in rounds one and two leading into the third? Great question, Phil, and we are seconds away from finding out. Seconds out. Brave Cage is about to be locked. Judge, 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 fighter, it's on. Again, Makiev employing some intelligent footwork, popping off that jab. Expect him to blitz, charging forward, there it is. Swing and a miss with the uppercut, he's oh. hit him big. He rocked him. Huge knee to the solar plexus from Makiev. Right against the cage here in front of us here in our broadcast position. Kerik, both men fighting for the underhooks. Vichar, very intelligent response to getting rocked. Looked for that over-under, took it to the cage, but he's now reversed and down. Beautiful single left from Makiev. Vichar closes the guard. Question is, how long will the referees allow them to go to work down here? We did see moments where 
Matija Vicho was threatening with the triangle. He was trying to solidify wrist control, stuff it down, trying to move the hips. I'd like to see more of that from Matija Vicho. The Beast is now shifting those hips in, hips in, forcing his opponent's head up against the cage. That does nullify an awful lot of the guard game in MMA. Very intelligent work from the 20-year-old. Cutting elbows should Makiev so choose. Ground and pound being landed. Phil, the beast is just a little less aggressive in this round than he was in the last round. There's a little bit of the Diego Sanchez about Mohamed Makiev. Not only in the way he looks, but also in the way he approaches the fight, blitzing forward. Matija Vichar was in on an arm, had it figure forward, looking for a Kimura, was denied. Maybe looking for a bump sweep. Back inside that half closed, half open guard. The guard's open now, if he would have stuffed the ankle down. There it is, past the knee past slide. The denied, denied again. Nice work from Vichar, trying to get that knee shield in. May look to try and play a little bit of rubber guard. Excellent job by the Beast, trying to further his position. There's a hierarchy for being in guard. That's real solid control from Makiev. Just has that hand or around the back, around the waist. Now he has the double underhooks again. Maybe a near two coming. You can see a belly to back suplex. Front headlock from Vichar. A beautiful. beautiful technique. Just slips out the front leg, drag takedown. Again, such intelligent awareness from the 20 year old. Vichar trying to last shots off his back. Makiev with the head buried underneath the chin and into the chest of Matija Vichar. Two minutes left in this tremendous fight. The referee wanted to see perhaps just a little more action. Didn't see it, stood him up. And I'll be honest, I disagree with that stand up because in my opinion, both fighters were lovely shots here. I'd like to see them let the let the fighters play it out a little bit more on the ground. As a fan of the ground game, I am too, and I'm a fan of the standing game. Matija Vichar landed a nice low kick. Oh, beautiful right hand from Matija Vichar. Kick to the body. Another big takedown could be on its way here from Matijev. Just pop that ankle out, go for the low ankle takedown. A little reversal of fortunes here. He needs to be wary of getting his back taken here. That's him, Vichar, could be going for a crucifix position, a la Gary Goodridge back in the day. Vichar now in north-south position, one minute with which to work. Can he snatch victory from the jaws of defeat? Phil, we've got an opportunity now to see what the beast can do off his back. We know what he does standing. We know what he does from top. Does he have a game off his back? He has that north side position, now in the parterre position, may look to take the back. And he popped out, oh! oh! Crushing knee to the body from the beast. That question was asked and answered. And I think Vichar may have just seen his one chance to do something productive taken from him by the beast. Positional work and heavy grind and pound for Mohamed Makiev. May look for a guillotine a quickly. Scramble. He's in, sinking those. It's in tight. That looks very, very tight. Has he got enough time? That's and it. And round ends. The beast dethrones the king here at Dream Combat Federation 34 WFC 24, live from Ljubljana, Slovenia. Mohamed Makiev. I want to see you again. Well, Phil, 
beginning of this fight, I asked you, why do they call this man the beast? We just had that answered in full. We'll walk us through this Green Hill replay. And that's a huge takedown, just mixing up the striking and the wrestling. And as I say, he was able to break the cadence, the flow of Mattia Vichur by being almost stuttering in his approach. He would look calm, he would look relaxed, and then he would just burst forward with a blitz. Absolutely beautiful performance from the young man from Austria, 20 years old, moving to 8-0 in his professional mixed martial arts career. This man may have just gone from prospect to contender with a performance like that, Kerry. Phil, I gotta tell you, he really does appear to have it all. He's got charisma. Got charisma, he's got technique, he's got conditioning. Once again, we've seen a young man enter the brave cage for the first time who may fight as well, way all the way up to champion. Muhammad the Beast Makayev. Carlos Kramer is gonna make it official. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give both of these warriors a great round of applause. Another great fight. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 30-26. Your next judge scores about 30-25. And your final judge scores about 3025 for your winner by unanimous decision Muhammad the beast Mikhail. tremendous job by the beast Irish Thunder is going to have a word with him All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, Mohamed the Beast Makayev. Absolutely stunning performance right from the first round. Was your intention to use your strikes to set up the wrestling and then implement that ground and pound? Again? Was your game plan to use your strikes to set up the takedown and use that beautiful ground and pound? I'm a striking fighter. I love to strike wrestling. I like to, when I was tired, I did take him down. Yeah, that's all. And I have just 10 days to prepare for this fight. I fight normal 66, 61. This fight, I did take 70 kilogram. That's why I was so fucking tired now, but it's okay. You now move your professional record, undefeated, 8-0. What do you want to do next in mixed martial arts? The next plan for me is the brave title. The featherweight title is mine. It is set. The belt is mine. Get it to me. Us. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A call out from the young prospect. Give it up one more time for Mohammed the Beast Makiev. <laughs> gentlemen what an incredible historic night your brave combat federation and wfc main card start now let's bring out our first two warriors on the main card from bethlehem pennsylvania 
USA. Please welcome Zach. Fun, Fun Size enters the Brave Combat Federation cage. This event is a co-promotion with Zlatko Mahix, WFC World Free Fight Challenge. We could not ask for a better partner. And let's welcome his opponent into the cage from Grozny, Russia. Please welcome Veli Marad. is a giant mountain in front of him. Speaking of giant man mountains, here's Carlos. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your Brave Combat Federation at WFC main card starts now. This bout, three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. This fight is brought to you by Naman Mui, Liniment Oil. Let's meet our first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 20 wins and 9 losses. He stands 163 centimeters tall and weighs a rate 57.1 kilograms. Represent TriStar Gym, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, by way of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, USA. Give it up for Zach Fonsize Markovsky. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of six wins and no losses. He stands 167 centimeters tall and weighs a rate 57 kilograms. Representing KHK Dagestan and KHK MMA and fighting out of Grozny, Russia. Give it up for Veli Moran. Your referee is Simone Spinot. Phil, quick shout out for the uh, sponsor for this fight. Naman Muay Thai Liniment Oil is absolutely great before and after training. It's great for you if you do MA. It's great for you if you exercise. It's great for you if you don't exercise. You just want to feel a little better. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. What I consider to be a potential number one contender bike. Say Zach Makovsky, an absolute veteran. What has, hasn't he done in mixed martial arts? I'll answer that question myself. Contested for the Brea flyweight title, Kirik. Makovsky being very careful of the strikes. I think he believes he can stop the leg shot just by use of his hips. He's got those hands very high. Using a long guard, more characteristic of Muay Thai. But of course, he's got Faraz Zahabi as a head coach. Rasta Hobby, arguably the greatest coach in mixed martial arts. Both men sort of feeling each other out right now, trying to get a gauge of one another. Both men are expecting the strikes to come in. They're keeping their rear hand very high. Phil, I think both of them are incredibly confident in their grappling ability. I think they don't believe they need an underhook mm. to stop a leg shot. No human being is punch proof as a consequence. Those hands are held high. I really like seeing that long guard from fun size. That's two shots and to the he's body. in and he's down, but does it last? No huge moment in this fight. Veli Murad Al Hasov back to standing. Beautiful use of the wizard. Almost rolled out the momentum of the takedown from Zach Makovsky. Hit the wizard and got back to his feet. Now putting the pressure on fun size. Phil, that little moment could be the story of this fight. If you can't take him down, he can keep the fight anywhere he wants to. You can see Billy Murad just wrenching at the arm now. Tried to pop in an elbow over the top. Makovsky staying calm in that over under position. May try and dig in for a second underhook. Again, a little bit of a shoulder bump. Phil, I just feel huge privilege to be calling a fight at this level. Nice work inside the clinch. And it'll be interesting. Both these guys are ground technicians. Again, beautiful use of the wizard from Veli Murad to get back to his feet. 
What I think is going to be interesting, Kerrick, is we've seen that the referees don't necessarily allow the fighters a lot of time to work on the ground against a, a Division One wrestler and a combat sambo specialist. And that could really change the complexion of this fight. It could indeed. Fun size tried two takedowns. Both of them weren't successful. My guess is on the next one, he's going to try and get just a little lower, get a lot more amplitude, try and slam his opponent, maybe try north-south. Murad with the Irish shoulder struck. Maybe trying to set up a potential judo throw. Just turn those hips. Very intricate battle here for the from inside the clinch. See the referee asking for a little bit more. I'm seeing some very significant hand fighting going on here. I wish the referee had given just a little bit longer to see what could happen. But we're about to get some action. Both fighters keeping the hands very high. Very confident in their dropping ability. Come on. I'm liking to see that attack to the body and the head. Both of them have employed it. In mixed martial arts, there's a little bit too much head hunting, a little bit too much looking for that knockout with naked punches. These two are going body and head, looping shots and straight shots, very high level, impressive, fun striking. Uh, just kind of controlling the pace of the fight right now, but gets caught. Oh, lovely straight left from Mikowski. Fun size, I do believe, is going to try that again. There it goes. The beautiful thing about being a southpaw is it lends itself to so many different types of injuries. You're essentially, your shots are coming in from strange angles that an orthodox fighter who trains primarily with other orthodox fighters won't be used to. Of course, it also allows him to employ his wrestling to its fullest extent. Striking arts, you lead with your weak hand. Wrestling, you lead with your strong hand. Being a southpaw, he's, it gives him the best of both worlds. pressure a little bit and that's that's a real hallmark that's a real imprint of Alcazov's game he, he turns up the pressure incrementally on you forces you to fight at his pace and he's an absolute cardio machine throws the fake leg kick trying to get a little bit of a response Mikowski charged forward with a couple strikes of his own that's third then fourth time Mikowski's had good luck with that straight left landed it again Take the back momentarily. This could be enough to win the round for Mikoski. Has one hook in. Oh. Ground ends. Could have been exciting, Phil. I do expect it to get down to the ground in the second round, though. We're going to get to see that again. The most telling aspect of that round, the most telling interaction was that takedown. And Mikoski able to get that hook in in a very, very, very tight round, a very closely contested round. That little piece of action may just have been enough to swing the round in favor of Zach Mikoski. Very, very tough round to call. Mm. My guess is, knowing judges fairly well, since Veli Murad was stalking continuously or almost continuously, they may well give it to him on that basis. But tough round to call, my friend. Two varying interpretations there from myself and Carrick. Let us know what you think using the hashtag Brave Combat Federation, Brave CF34. Join the conversation, Brave Nation. Here we see the takedown attempt from Zach Makovsky and that beautiful use of the wizard from Billy Murad. Just turns the hip, doesn't allow his back to touch the ground. The floor is lava, does not allow his back to touch it. Up he gets. Beautiful, beautiful use to Phil of the overhead cam. Big thanks to our production team, best in the business. Here we go, round two. And what's proving to be an incredibly intriguing battle. Alkazov starts off the busier, again incrementally turning up that pressure. Step in knee from Zach. That step in knee was a step too far. It exposes the body a lot, and that's what you saw. I don't think we're going to see that from Zach again. Strong kick to the body from Veli Murad. Nice shift and weight there from Zach. Makoski had big success with that straight left hand in the first round. Second round, he's having much less. He's eating some shots now. I expect to see him try something different, possibly a level change, get in on those hips. Billy Murad doing well just to hit the straight on the switch. Thought about the uppercut as Zach was coming in. Zach moving laterally. He used to try and keep away from 
that right side of Veli Murad. Seems to be moving right into the power hand and power kick. Veli Murad may be setting him up for a head kick. You can see he's just keeping his foot on the outside of Makovsky's end on a single. Denied very quickly. Both of them have showed tremendous takedown defense. Momentarily got Veli Murad down but got back up. Oh, big shot from Alkazov. Phil, I'm liking fun size footwork. Very adroit, smooth footwork. Keeping him out of a lot of trouble, and I believe setting up a couple of different attacks, but he got caught with one. Oh, catches him with the step in the... That time it worked. Seemed to just gauge. Oh, but then gets caught with a straight from Veli Murad. Billy Murad again trying to land. I think what you're seeing this time is Makovsky's able just to, to, to move out with the momentum. A big takedown again. Very significant moment in the fight. So the shots from Billy Murad, whilst they, they may look like they're connecting, I think Makovsky's able just to move enough out of the way that they're more grazing shots than they are landing flush. He does have terrific footwork, as you see right there, and he is, of course, an incredibly durable fighter. Nice knee to the body from Makovsky. Ladies and gentlemen, a brave nation, what you're seeing here is not two guys banging away at each other with wild abandon. They are solving problems right here. Each fighter is presenting problems to the other fighter. That fighter has to figure out how to fix those problems, how to attack on his own. This is chess. There's only so many of those inside leg kicks that Mikowski can take. What I'd like to see him is fake the takedown and come up either with the knee or uppercut because he catches the kick, but doesn't quite get the takedown. I'd like to see him trying to elicit that sprawl reaction out of Alcazar. Conventional strategy for a southpaw fighter is to keep his lead foot on the outside of the other fighter's lead foot. Mm -hmm. It opens up that straight left. However, fun size is taking an opposite approach. It is used, but to a lesser extent. He's trying to cut to the inside to open up the center line of his opponent. Open it up with that long stepping knee. Open it up with a straight left. He is having some success with it. It is a little unconventional, though. It is, however, a very dangerous game to play, Kirk. As you say, you're moving into the, the real power shots of your opponent as a southpaw. Just under a minute to go in the second round of this intriguing technical battle. It's nasty. Thus far, fun size, his ability to level change to get in on those hips does not appear to be compromised. I don't know that that would last forever. Trying to get in on the single very well. I said no. Short time now. I don't either. I've, I've judged hundreds of fights. When you watch a fight as a fan, you look at it one way. As a commentator, another way. As a judge, a third way. Without looking at this as a judge, I have no idea who is winning these rounds. All I know is in mixed martial arts, you shouldn't leave it in the hands of the judges. I think both corners are going to tell their fighter that. Both fighters are going to come out looking for a finish. It's also possible, Phil, that both corners believe their fighter is winning the fight, and they tell them, just keep doing what you're doing, it's working. Or it's entirely possible that both corners think that their fighter is done and may need to finish the win. It's true, it's that close of fight. No 
only thing that really stuck out in my mind in that round was the inside leg kicks of Billy Borad. And that's, but that's just off the top of my head. Such a good defensive wrestler. All to play for, pretty much, going into the third and final round, Carrick. Best answer I have is I think the judges may well like that forward movement by Beli Morad, but it's a pure guess. And Beli Morad starting off the, the more aggressive. The side Paul Makovsky trying to counter strike. Attempted by Veli Murad. This time Mikowski was able to get out of the way. Fun size is corner, so the success he was having with that straight left. I do believe they told him to go out and try it again. He's fallen back in a couple of setups he used earlier, that long guard, fainting a kick. I think we're gonna see more of it. in those leg kicks. Mikowski keeping the fight on the outside. Again, as you say, circling into the power of Veli Murad Alcazov. Phil, I personally am loving fun sizes footwork. I think defensively it's brilliant. I don't know that it's going to be playing to what the judges want to see. That uh, was a nice shot. Oh! Veli Murad's been hit with something that might have been an eye poke. I don't think Mikowski was aware of it. He would have charged forward else. Otherwise. Fun size showing a little bit more aggression now. Nice job from Mikowski. Is it possible to win a fight on the back foot like Mikowski's been doing here? It's possible, but it, it, it takes a certain level of judges. Beautiful. Oh, what a scramble. What a gravy roll. That was beautiful work from Zach Makovsky. That is folk style wrestling. Under freestyle Greco rules, match would have been over. Folk style, they give you a longer on your back. Absolutely fantastic American wrestling technique. Those low kicks starting to mark up fun sizes. Lower extremity. Just coming up on the halfway point of the third and final round. Mikowski again on his bike, landing those pot shots, circling away. Potentially could a takedown, could a clean takedown from either man win them the fight? Phil, we are in a warrior nation. These officials, these people, they love a fight. I think they're going to want to see more than a takedown to clinch around. I want to. I think they want to see somebody rock somebody. Somebody really take the the ascendancy, take the initiative, and, and do something definitive. Pop in knee again from Mikowski. So far in this round, the greater frequency, the, the greater cumulative strikes have been landed by Zach Makovsky. However, he's employing a style that's a little bit elusive. Mm. What the judges may see is not a guy successfully defending himself, but a guy running away a little bit. It's not what's going on, but it is an interpretation. just comes down to what the three cage side judges are looking at and, and how they how they score a fight. Billy Murad thought about the spin and back fist, decided to abandon it. That's nice head work from Mikowski. He seems to be landing the jab and just getting off the center line. Just trip take down, standing side on against Billy Murad. Take down denied. You can see Billy Murad perhaps trying to work for something like a Darcy Peruvian necktie. Popped up to standing. These two, they're, they're grappling is at such a high level, it's super hard to get them down. They're essentially way harder to keep them down. They're essentially canceling each other out. You're seeing fair, almost mirror images of one another. 30 seconds left in the third and final rounds. 
He can do something to really take the fight, to leave a lasting impression in the minds of the judges. I do believe, Phil, that one clean, big shot to the face could win this round, and with it, potentially, the entire fight. Popping knee again from Mikowski. We see a firefight in the cruising stanzas. Spinning heel kick attempt, almost capoeira esque from Billy Murad. Very ably slipped by fun size. Ah! Here's a thin fight. Woo! Oh! Oh! My trip versus your double leg. <laughs> Brotherhood in the brave cage. Both these guys look like they had a lot of fun in there. And as you say, I don't know who you can give that fight to. Rears are close, rears are thin. I'm going to go and grab a word with the winner, whoever that may be. Ladies and gentlemen of the Brave Nation, it's the oldest saying in the book. Oldest saying in mixed martial arts, don't leave it in the hands of the judges. That's what's happened right here. I can make an absolutely excellent argument for either fighter winning. I can make an excellent argument for a tie. I can make an excellent argument for a split decision. If you ask me to predict this one, I guess I'd have to say split decision. Winner, Beli Murad. Now, in a razor-thin fight like this, you have to be absolutely sure to tabulate the scores perfectly. We've seen a few top-level fights over the years, a few top-level fights over the decades, messed up initially by poor scoring. WFC, World Free Fight Challenge, has fantastic officials. They are making sure our I's are dotted, dotted and our T's are crossed. When the scores are tallied perfectly, the score will be handed over to the roaring lion, Carlos Kramer, and he'll make it official. When that happens, the Irish Thunder Phil Campbell is going to have a word with the winner, whoever that winner is. I believe we've got just short time now between when it happens. Use that short time remaining to try and figure out who won. We are about to find out. Referee standing center cage has both fighters hands in his wrist and the roaring lion's gonna make it official. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Another amazing bout. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 30, 27, Makovsky. Your next judge scores about 30, 27, Alkazov. And your last judge scores about 29, 28, for your winner, by split decision, Zach Fonsez Makovsky. Ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, there you go. I called the split decision. I called it for the wrong fighter. I could have made a fantastic argument either way. Phil Campbell's going to have a word. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, Zach Makovsky. One judge gave it 30-27 in your favor. One judge gave it 30-27 against. In the fight, did you think it came down to such a close margin? Uh, yeah, I definitely thought it was a close margin. It's hard for me to judge when you're in the fight. You don't have a good idea of what it appears like. I felt like the first round was very close. I might have stole it at the end with a takedown and, and getting to the back. And I thought I pulled out the third by a little bit, but I thought he clearly had the second round. Probably the clearest round of the fight from what I can tell. I thought he won the second round. So a 30-27 for myself, I don't agree with. But I, I personally... Not having seen it from a third person, thought I might have pulled out the first and third. Uh, I'll watch it back and let you, let you know what I honestly think. What do you think was the definitive action in the fight that led to you winning it? Uh, I think I just landed clean shots. Uh, he was definitely throwing more and kind of backing me up, uh, which is different than most of the fights I've seen him in. Usually he's kind of the one who's moving laterally and looking for takedowns and kicks. He's got a good, I knew he had strong kicks coming in. He, he had some good kicks on my leg, for sure. That was probably the most effective thing. And he was strong with the pressure against the cage. It was hard to get off the cage. But in the center, I felt like 
I did control the distance well. I landed clean counters and then evaded him trying to punch back. I thought that's maybe what the edge was. Now the Brave Combat Federation flyweight division is wide open. What do you want next? Um, wh whatever really. I mean, this is my first fight back in uh, over two years. I had a ACL surgery and uh, was out for over two years. So uh, it was pretty tough, the rehab and the uh, big training and recovery. And then looking for a good show to come back to. Thankfully, Brave uh, hooked it up and they have been amazing all week. One of the very best, if not the best treatment of the fighters I've been with. And I've fought all over the world for 13 years. So thank you so much, Brave. And uh, I mean, Vela Murad is kind of like, he's kind of like the de facto champion. He, he would have won the belt his last fight but he uh, missed weight, so he didn't receive the belt, but he was the best. So uh, I know uh, the man he fought, uh, Abdur, and uh, Shorty Torres were scheduled. Maybe the winner of that, or uh, I don't know. Whatever. We'll see, we'll talk. Well, it was an honor to call your fight. Congratulations on the win. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Zach Funsize Makovsky! Добрый вечер. Салам алейкум. Первым долгом я хочу поблагодарить лидера нашей команды КХК, КХК Дагестан, Халид бин Хамад Аль-Халифа. Спасибо большое, барак Аллаху фиг, что позволяешь мне здесь показать себя от... А также хочу поблагодарить своих братьев, тренеров, всех болельщиков, кто поддерживает меня, кто против меня. Всех хочу поблагодарить. Хочу сказать пару слов по поводу боя тоже. Я удивляюсь судейским решением. Во-первых, то, что раздельным решением они посмотрели. Здесь... Все три раунда, вроде как я видел, нападал я на него, бил. Без проблем, конечно, он два удара дал мне, один в левый, один в правый глаз. Все максимум, что я увидел от него. А после судьи вот такое показывают решением, раздельным решением отдают ему победу. Я не понимаю это. Я со своей командой... Дам апелляцию на этот бой. Хочу оспорить это решение, естественно. И меня все поддерживают, кроме тех, которые поддерживают Зака. Спасибо всем. Еще, конечно, чуть ли не забыл мои спонсора. Сити Строй, Маратска, Союз, группа компаний, Тимурска, ВНК, Рашма. Лизгит Центр. Всем спасибо. Всем спасибо. Ladies and gentlemen, very much. All right, Slovenia, we are just heating up in this incredible Brave Combat Federation WFC magical historical night. Let's bring our next two warriors into the cage. From Brazil, by way of UAE, give it up for Yuri Terrorista Fraga into the cage. From New Jersey, USA, put your hands together for Phil Zilla. Ladies and gentlemen, this next war is three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. This battle is brought to you by Protini.si Sports Nutrition. Let's meet our first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins, 10 losses, and one draw. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighs already 84.4 kilograms. Representing Gracie Humata International, 
Brazil by way of UAE. Give it up for Yuri Tavista Fraga. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of six wins and two losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall and he weighs already 84.4 kilograms. Represent Tiger Shulman's gym and fighting out of New Jersey, USA. Give it up for Phil Zilla Pauls. Your three is Emiliano Carosi. So does Phil Zilla try and take his opponent down and risk being in that guard? Does he try and keep it standing? Stand and bang. I think what we might see is Phil Zilla Hawes implement his defensive wrestling in order to keep the fight standing and not go into the, the, the submission realm with an incredibly dangerous BJJ black belt. Phil Zilla is suffering a slight reach disadvantage, does not seem to be affecting him yet. That fade is a little bit dangerous. You don't want to do it a lot. Nice one, two by Zilla. You can see that he's not diving in. He, he had the perfect opportunity after that one, two to shoot in for a takedown, but I think we may be seeing Zilla choosing to keep this fight standing and work a little bit on that striking game. Phil, Yuri Fraga's hands are just a little bit too low for me to feel comfortable with what he's doing. He's, he's, using, he's using range to protect himself, but when you're facing an athlete of Phil Zilla's extraordinary talents, you can't count on distance to save you. Nice head movement there from Phil Zilla. Just gets himself off the center line. He's getting closer with that one, too. I'd also like to see Yuri keep a little bit more distance between his back and that fence. Brazil, not just a wrestler, has competed professionally in Muay Thai. Again, just an illustration of how well-rounded he is, and I guess an illustration of just how well-rounded a mixed martial artist needs to be in the modern context of the game, Kerry. Phil Zilla is a protege of TS MMA, Tiger Shulman's MMA, most successful chain in mixed martial arts. Nice little cross-check there from Fraga. Phil Zilla is getting dangerously close with that right hand. Push kick makes me cringe every time I see it. Yuri Fraga, as he seems to be moving backward, he lets his hands drop. Very dangerous game to play. He does have a very durable chin, but that's not something you want to have tested in this sport. He may have got rocked just a little bit there. He's lost his legs. Phil Zilla wants to jump on him fast, and oh, he's doing him it. Again. The head clears in five to ten seconds. Phil knows it. He's going to try and put that hand oh, on the he head again. again. He's done oh, it. He dropped it. He's dropped it. it. <laughs> Phil Zilla wreaking havoc. Big right and pound being landed here by Phil Zilla. Very intelligent not to fall inside that guard. And again, showing his MMA IQ by not diving in. May even choose and elect to take a step back and beckon Yuri back to his feet. Uh, it's a brilliant fight strategy, Phil. Phil Zilla is not going to fall inside that guard and risk getting triangled, risk getting key locked, risk getting armbarred. He's happy to stay out of danger and cause damage. Oh. He chooses to, to do Phil's job for him and gets Yuri back to his feet. Has Fraga had enough time to recover? Has the head cleared? Oh, caught again, he's wobbled. That could be it. Big shot, he's out on his feet. Heavy hammer fist. This, this could be the end. This Phil time he's going for it. This time he's going for it. Landing beautiful elbows. But Fraga manages to work back in. Yuri Fraga is a bad man. This time, Phil Zilla again, just showing serious calm and restraint. Could be seeing another big right hand coming from Phil Zilla. Phil, very smart, goes to the body, then the head. Those right hands are absolutely huge. And he's just pinging them off the head of Yuri Fraga. 
I'm also loving the fact that Phil Zilla is not going crazy. He's having luck picking his shots from the outside. He's dancing with a gal that brung him. Ironically, it's Phil Zilla that's landing bombs, not Terrorista. Another big overhand. This could be it. Huge shots coming in from Phil Zilla. Phil Zilla completely composed. Stifled. This is it. You don't even see Yuri trying to snake in, trying to turn this in. This is it, Phil. This is it. Those hips are not turning. Yuri Fraga not trying to get guard. Hammer fist from Phil Zilla. Referee's taking a long, hard look at it. This we no longer see intelligent defense. This is not intelligent defense, as you say, Carrick. This is just absorbing punishment. That's and it. It's over. Phil Zilla. Phil Zilla has with the second first round finish in his brave career. Maintains his 100% finish record in his MMA career. The Fifth. Tiger Shulman MMA fighter is dominant in the Brave Combat Federation cage. Fifth win by KO or TKO in the all round career of Phil Zilla Hawes. Remaining calm, remaining humble. Good news, Phil. Yuri Fraga is okay. He's up on his feet. Maybe just a little bit unsteady. Does not appear to be concussed. And that right hand all day was money for Phil Zilla Hawes. <laughs> Almost looks disinterested. Beautiful performance by the Tiger Shulman's product. Couple of friendly words between these two. Even in the case of a TKO like this, you still have got to get the exact time right. You've got to get the official determination of how it ends. Looks like it's happened. Carlos Kramer having a couple of words with the ref, and Carlos makes it official. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another explosive Brave Combat Federation WFC battle in the cage. This one comes to an end at four minutes and 42 seconds of the first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes, Phil Zilla. Hose! All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Phil Zella Hawes. To look at your record, to look at your background, people would assume that you would want to implement your wrestling, but your right hand was money throughout that fight. Is that something that you were thinking about doing consciously in this fight? Yeah, uh... A lot of people think I'm just a wrestler, so I'm going to showcase some other skills I have to get ready for that belt. I was just about to ask you, I'm sure Daniel Gaucho, the current middleweight champion of Brave Combat Federation, is watching right now. Do you have a message for him? Uh, what's his name? Daniel Gaucho. <laughs> yeah, Daniel can get it. Daniel, I'll see you soon, boy. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, give it up for Phil Zilla Hawes! Fantastic answer by Phil Zilla. I'll see you, boy. All right, Slovenia and the millions watching around the world, let's continue our historic night with Brave Combat Federation and WFC making history. Let's welcome our next warrior into the cage. From Novi Sad, Serbia, please welcome Zarko Sivak Sekovic. Zarko Sivak Sekovic winning the award for walkout music, rocking some serious old school bust out the glow sticks. Let's have a party. First things first, a little bit of business. Zargo Sedaklevic, 24 years old, brings with him an undefeated 2 and 0 professional record with both wins coming by way of KO in the very first round. Training under head coach Nemanja Milosevic, he began his, his professional career 2 and 0, but prior to that, he 
on his amateur career on it on oak. So essentially, we're looking at a 10 fight win streak. An amateur MMA champion of the Balkan region, an amateur MMA Serbian state champion, and began it all off with an amateur MMA Belgrade title. Interestingly, began his athletic career as a competition swimmer at the age of 12. Phil's strategy in mixed martial arts is a, is a tricky thing. You can go in with one idea, get punched in the face. You may have to switch it completely, but this fight is gonna have a predetermined strategy. One fighter's looking for the knockout. One fighter's looking for the submission. The man you see here, Marco Senegalevich, is gonna be looking for the knockout, and he's gotten it in every fight to date. Riding high confidence, his last fight he defeated George T. Baklinov by a first round TKO in Bulgaria. That was in October of 2019, so he's looking to continue that momentum, to continue to ride the crest of a wave. As you know, Phil, I love nicknames. Sivak, does it have a meaning or is it just a cool word? I'll be honest, Carrick, not a blues clue, but it sure is fun to say. Seabach, 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 just about to enter the Brave Combat Federation cage. All ready to go. Let's bring on our next fighter, Carlos Kramer. And let's welcome his opponent into the cage from Ljubljana, Slovenia! Give it up for Yako! making his way to the Brea Arena, representing TNT Gym. Ljubljana, 23 years old, and brings with him a professional record of two wins against one solitary loss. His last fight, he defeated Italian Eduardo Lorenzetti by a first round rear naked choke at WFC 23 in February of 2019. One thing that I would like to point out about Jakob's career, there have been long periods of inactivity. Made his debut in November of 2014, then didn't compete again until almost three years later, in October of 2017. Then again, competed in February of 2019. Is that going to play any type of a part in his approach to this fight here? I don't believe so. I believe the tail of this fight is very clearly mapped out. You've got an unstoppable force versus an immovable object. You've got a fighter who always wins by knockout. You've got a fighter who's never been, never won by knockout and always wins by submission. You're going to see two fighters fighting ferociously for one thing, stopping the fight in one hand by strikes, on the other hand, by submission. One man whose majesty we always submit to is the man in the sparkly bow tie, Mr. Carlos Kramer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this next war is three five minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. This fight is brought to you by Pitbull West Coast. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of two wins and no losses. He stands 191 centimeters tall and weighs already 91.8 kilograms. Represent CDS MMA team and fighting out of Novi Sad, Serbia. Give it up for Zarko Sivak Set Glavitz. Partisan crowd letting the, everybody know what they think. Opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man's a big trust artist with a professional record of two wins and one loss. He stands 193 centimeters tall and weighs already 93.4 kilograms. Representing TNT Gym and fighting out of Ljubljana, Slovenia. Give it up for Jakob 
Your referee is Emiliano Carosi. This fight is sponsored by Pitbull West Coast. One more time, thanks to our sponsor, Pitbull West Coast. Here we have it, Kirik, the striker, Zarko Seduklevich versus the submission specialist of Jakob Nedo. It's on, whose will be done? Kick from Zedoglevich. You can hear the chants of Jakob ringing out through the arena, Kerry. But it's the striker in on the takedown. This is a big sprawl from Jakob. Can he get him down so far? Good defensive work. Jakob may try and hit the switch, has the underhook. And this may be exactly where Jakob Nero wants the fight. Works expertly off those double underhook trip takedowns. Usually landing in side control, but Zedo Klevich doing well to fight that hands. Referee may be separating him momentarily. I think Jakob Neda has and double underhooks. there it was. That was very quick. Slovenia loves action. Nice job from Zedo Klevich. Changing the levels is Jakob Neda. Oh, no, he drops drops it. It. His shot! That's it, it's all over! Unbelievable! From Jakob Neda, the submission specialist, charges forward with a huge shot! Jakob Neda, take a boy, young man! Jakob Neda shows he's got one complete game! And the crowd goes crazy! What a way to get the first knockout victory of your professional career. Dangerous, dangerous hands. Zedo Klevich still on the canvas. I'll say right now our thoughts are with him. Hopefully he can get up in and off his own collision. Yakov checking on his opponent, making sure everything's okay. Zedo Klevich still defending as if he's in the fight. Not really sure what's happened. Happens often. Still trying to fight on. Phil, this is what's called Queer Street. The fighter still believes he's in the fight. The referee, without any, without any aggressive movements, is explaining to him what happened. The doctor's explaining to him what happened, but his mental processes have slowed down. He knows he was in a fight. He's not sure what's going on. He's always been told to keep fighting and keep fighting. That's what he's doing right now. The officials are doing an excellent job with him. They've called his corner in. I've seen officials respond overly aggressively in moments like that. We're not having that happen. These WFC officials are top flight. They're treating the fighter very gently and explaining this fight is over, which it is. Your winner from Slovenia, Jakob Neto, adds a KO to his submission game. Zarko is up on his feet. He appears to be steady in his gait. Crowd is now cheering him. They're gonna have to help him navigate those stairs a little bit slowly. But his mind is recovering. I just gotta look into his eyes. They're largely focused. He's back, just embraced with his opponent. Marko Sedeglevich has found himself again. He's exiting the brave cage. And Phil Campbell is gonna have a word with your winner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, how about that? Another explosive finish. 
This one comes to an end at one minute and 18 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes from Ljubljana, Slovenia, Jakob Negok. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, Jakob Nero. Jakob, to look at your record, you have two wins by submission. We thought you were the grappler coming into this fight. You won by devastating KO. How does it feel? Все мои прежние борьбы с Облена Претерию, когда нас противник не прочекал моего бокса и стендапа, познал все твердо дело, все все исплачало, все было на месте. Когда хвала всем тренерам, спонсорам. VFC ju za to priložnost. Hvala. Koša obala, stari. Hvala vsem, ki ste me prišli podpred. A ja še nekaj za konec. To borbo posvečam Roku Oslakoviću. Roki, počivaj v miru. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for your winner by KO, Jakob Mero! Get ready for another incredible battle inside the brave WFC cage. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of Paris, France. Please welcome Benoit, the god of war. Put your hands together for Ivisa Terra Trushek. Phil, this fight is brought to us by OKEX NR1 Cryptocurrency Exchange. Again, that's OKEX NR1 Cryptocurrency Exchange. What can you tell us about Ivisa Terror Trushek? I can tell you that you are looking at a bona fide veteran of European mixed martial arts, representing American top team Zagreb, Croatia. This man has a weird boy. Brace yourself. 38 wins and 34 losses record. Now let me just repeat that. He has 38 wins against 34 losses. This is his 73rd professional mixed martial arts fight. What's even more impressive than those numbers are his finishing rate. 35 total finishes. 23 by way of KO or TKO 12 by way of submission. 24 finishes coming in the very first round. Roughly that translates into a finishing rate of approximately 92% in fights that he has won. Wildly unorthodox striking style, almost like a drunken monkey. It's very hard for his competitors, for his opponents, to try and get a read on it. Because I don't think they can they can get a read on what is trying to do if Ivisa doesn't fully know himself. Tara Trusic is, of course, the current WFC welterweight champion. This is, of course, a non-title bout, as we have one of the best from WFC fighting one of the best from Brave Combat Federation. Yes, that partnership may just be going out the window for three rounds of mixed martial arts action. International bragging rights at stake. Here at Brave Combat Federation 34, WFC 24. Bill, I did some quick math, and I believe this man has more fights than the entire rest of the main card combined. It's an absolutely extraordinary number. It's an extraordinary amount of experience that he brings up against the young god of war. Speaking of a man with exponential experience inside the cage, you know him, you love him, the roaring lion of brave, Mr. Carlos Kramer. Ljubljana, you have been incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. This battle is brought to you by OKEX, your number one cryptocurrency exchange. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner, 
This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins, no losses, and one no contest. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 77.3 kilograms. Representing Venom Training Center and fighting out of Paris, France. Put your hands together for Benoit, God of War, Sadani. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 38 wins and 34 losses. He stands 171 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 77.3 kilograms. Representing American top team, Zagreb, and fighting out of Zagreb, Croatia. Put your hands together for Ivisa. Terror Trushev! For referee instructions, Simone Espinola. This is the common event. Be fair. Fight hard. Listen on my time to my corner. Protect yourself. If I say stop, you stop. If you want to go, do it now. Go back to you. Referee, large and in charge. Got a war, Benoit Saint-Denis, been identified as possibly the next big thing in mixed martial arts. He's got to prove it in now. Real interesting bite in prospect. You can see that head movement take down tonight. Beautiful sprawl, but both these guys are dry right now. How much of a coup would it be if Evisa Trusic can get the submission on the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu purple belt, the submission specialist that is Benoit Saint-Denis. Abandons it rightly to get back up. Beautiful transition to standing. Going to get to see a different aspect of these fighters' game. How do they do chest to chest up against the cage? Benoit saint trying to implement a little bit of that judo black belt game that he has. And on the takedown, good work. Trying to control the hips of Ivisa Trusic. Phil, France is, of course, a world powerhouse in judo. Judo, I think, doesn't get the respect it deserves in mixed martial arts. God of War may foresee issue. Has that wrist control with one hook in. A little bit cheeky, had his toes in the fence there. Referee didn't spot it. But again, right back in on the take time. And they look to just suck out the hips there. Will be Visa Trusic. Phil, I was very impressed. That back take did not work. Perfect transition to stay on top. Seeing possible attempt at a Leg shelf. Just trying to triangle those legs, as you say, elevate them. In order to be standing, Phil, you got to have your head over your shoulders, over your hips, over your feet. If you can keep the fit feet above the hips. Just as we're seeing here, good work. Very intelligent from Benoit saint -Denis. Just taking his time, methodically working, not expending any unnecessary energy. Very hard to keep that position, that shelf, but you can often get a few shots into the face while it happens the back of Trusic, but doesn't have the hooks in. Trusic just trying to shrug him off. What? One hook in from Benoit saint -Denis. What is Benoit going to transition to when he loses the back? That's the question. Potentially, we may have seen him go for the armbar, but then just in seamlessly. The single. That is seamless wrestling from the judo black belt. The undefeated prospect now, again, just taking his time. Only five fights deep in his mixed martial arts career, this being his sixth. Showing some veteran savvy and calm in there against the 73-fight veteran that is Ivisa Trusic. Phil, I am extremely impressed with the God of War. It's not that everything he's doing is working. It's that when it doesn't work, he bails and maintains top control. Very, very hard to do in those micro scrambles. May slide through into mount. There it is. Got that left foot waiting to hook under the calf. There it goes. Well, may have the rear naked choke, but Ivisa doing the right thing by trying to turn in. Nice work by the veteran. Has to be wary of the arm bar. Look out for the sweep. Maybe it on a leg. May switch to the heel hook. He's happy just to land strikes, but needs to be very careful here. Good work. Beautiful transitions in on the heel. It's a little bit of a 50-50 position now. Both men fighting for a leg. 
Trusic trying to get in on that heel. It looks just past the point. It looks like it's just popped out, but I'm sure that that's taking its toll on Benoit Santini trying to spin out of it. Legs are laced. Benoit looking for a toe hole, looking for a knee, knee bar. bar. The top. And he got it! Beautiful first round submission from the God of War. Transition seamlessly into the knee bar. What awareness from the prospect. Absolutely fantastic. Mixed martial arts, doesn't work, doesn't care, find something else, doesn't work, doesn't care, find something else, and it works, rips that knee apart. Benoit Saint-Denis, the god of war! Benoit Saint-Denis got involved in a little bit of a 50-50 position, the god of war said no more, took the knee, took the win, first round submission in the bank. Bill, that man's using universal language to show he wants that belt. He's got the French tricolor over his shoulders. We're gonna have something official. We're gonna have an interview in just a little bit. Right now, Benoit Saint-Denis sporting one of our sponsors, Monster Energy Drink. It gives you energy. It tastes great. Why wouldn't you? Benoit Saint-Denis embracing his opponent once again, showing the characteristic respect that we very nearly always see in the Brave Cage. And speaking of a man I respect, Carlos Kramer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible finish to that fight. This comes to an end at three minutes and 39 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by Nibar, Benoit Galapoir Sardini. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your winner, the God of War, Benoit Santani. An absolutely beautiful performance. You were coming in. This was your sixth fight against a 73 fight veteran. Was that something that may have been playing in your mind or was the game plan straightforward? Go for the submission. Uh, you know, I like to put pressure on everybody I'm fighting because I know with my heart, with my mental, I'm always ready. So if, if he's not, I can lose a bit of energy at the first. I will be great at the second and the third, you know? And my goal in Brave Combat Federation now is to get the super lightweight title. You know, I think this guy has it. Uh, the guy that has the title, I want my shot against him, you know? I, I, I love Brave Combat Federation. Everything is going great. I'm happy now after less than one year of professional MMA to fight against such an experienced fighter and you know I'm putting everything I have to be the next great thing and uh, I want it to be in Brave Combat Federation so super lightweight is my goal super lightweight title I will come for you there you have it ladies and gentlemen a beautiful performance sir congratulations ladies and gentlemen Benoit Santani <laughs> ladies and gentlemen I'm here with Avisa Trusic Avisa, you went in there against a prospect. You left it all inside the cage. You have to be happy with the reception you got from the people here. Evo prije nego me ovoga sterate proći, da velim fala masnicu i forgaću kaj su bili u kutu, ATT u Black Dragonu, Martinjak Mesnici i Profeit Storu i Reptilima koji su tu negde. Hvala. Uglavnom, kad god... Ja sam ko ovaj konj, cowboy jučer. Kad god dođem na... Na najveći nekakvi test uvijek zajebem, ne znam, od pet velikih stvari, ja sam pet zajebao, ako niš drugo, barem sam dosljedan da zajebem. We hope to see you back soon, sir. Thank you for a great fight. Ladies and gentlemen, Evisa Trusic!
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening for the WFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Let's meet our first warrior from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Please welcome Victor Vasic. Phil, what can happen in MMA? Anything! And there is no division more wild, more unpredictable than heavyweight, where with just one touch, the audience can get a real good look at what those soles of your feet look like. What can you tell us about this fighter? Carrying absolutely everyone in combat sports, whether it be MMA, kickboxing, boxing. Love seeing the big guys go at it. Viktor Vasic, representing Viktor Vasic fight team. Coming into the Brave Arena with a professional record of five wins against three losses. Wiley considered a veteran of Balkan mixed martial arts. His last fight, he defeated Mount and Kalaja by a second round TKO in Bosnia and Herzegovina in April of 2018. Whilst that may sound like he's had a little bit of a layoff, he is constantly competing in kickboxing and K1, winning a number of regional and national titles. Incredibly dangerous stand-up, incredibly dangerous on the round, on the ground, a very well-rounded veteran mixed martial artist. Bill, what kind of a streak are we looking at with this fighter? You're looking, he's coming off a two-fight win streak, and that's nearly as many fights as Luka Podkrajic has had in his mixed martial arts career. As we said, competed extensively in kickboxing, training his stand-up under well-renowned striking coach Isaac Mesevich. Phil, am I correct that this man has never gone to a decision? This is correct. Neither man has gone to a decision. However, Vitor Vasic has gone beyond the first round, something which Luka Poklajic cannot claim to have done. Final preparations being done in the prep point. What's gonna happen? Nobody knows! Let's keep the train moving on in our main event, Mr. Carlos Kramer. And let's welcome his opponent into the cage. From Ljubljana, Slovenia! Put your hands together for Luka LP Pakrajic! Brave Combat Federation is the world's only truly global mixed martial arts organization. Among a number of our central efforts, we bring top local prospects to the global stage. Undefeated Luka Podkrajšek from Black Box MMA here in Ljubljana is the top heavyweight prospect in Slovenia. Phil, what can you tell us about him? I can tell you you're looking at an undefeated prospect at 3-0 and oh in his mixed martial arts career. Two wins by way of KO, one win by submission. Has never been beyond the 3 minute 15 second point of the very first round. His last fight, he defeated Tadej Daishman by a first round TKO due to soccer kicks at WFC 23, which was more of a hybrid event. Obviously, soccer kicks are not legal in Brave Combat Federation, so he will have to keep his eye on that. Has a huge overhand right, which he uses to set up the clinch. Obviously, at this way, both guys are going to be incredibly dangerous. One thing I'd like to say about Luka Podkrajic is he's a, a little bit of a renaissance man, eh? a recording artist in his own right, having recorded two hip-hop albums, now moving into producing techno music. So he'll definitely try and hit all the right notes tonight in Brave Combat Federation. Again, Brave Nation, I am making absolutely no apology for the quality of these puns. Luka Podkrajic makes his way into the cage to contest for the vacant WFC World Heavyweight title. Two absolute titans. Do you know what? Make that three absolute titans. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carlos Kramer.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Three five minute rounds for the WFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. Lubia, Slovenia, are you ready? Let's meet our first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. He's been the mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and three losses. He stands 188 centimeters tall and weighs already 109.4 kilograms. Representing Vitor Vasic fight team and fighting out of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Put your hands together for Vitor Vasic. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of three wins and no losses. He stands. 188 centimeters tall and weighs already 110 kilograms. Representing Black Box MMA, Ljubljana, and fighting out of Ljubljana, Slovenia. Give it up for Luka LP. Pashet. For referee instructions. Simone Spinola. This fight is sponsored by MMA On. MMA On is creating the biggest and most exciting MMA fan network yes, in the world. The, the future of sports is in its digitization. Be fair. Protect MMA yourself on. The if I say stop, you stop. If you want to touch the glue, do it now. Go back to your corner. Slovenia, let's make some noise! Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, as if you were not pumped enough for this fight, you have the ringing endorsement from the roaring lion, Carlos Kramer. Two heavyweights about to throw down for your entertainment here at Brave Combat Federation 34 WFC 24. Phil, the marks on Luca's uh, left front thigh are from cupping. It's a medical treatment. There's no damage there. It's not a, some weird infection. Pokaic almost lazily just gauging distance with that outstretched jab. But do you think perhaps, Kerry, if he's had treatment on that thigh, that it may be somewhere that Vasic will, would want to target? Cupping can be done anywhere. It's good for the entire body. It's a, it's a medical technique that comes out of the east, out of Central Asia. Some people find it extremely effective. Both these guys trying to get a gauge of one another because we know at heavyweight one fight can end it all. Lucas trying to set his opponent up. He's trying to almost lull him into a false sense of security with that slow jab. He's trying to slow his opponent down just a little bit so he can let that big right hand go. Both these guys just trying to gauge the measure of one another. First real shot and anger thrown by Vitor Vasic. But Krajic up in the tempo a little bit with the jab. Nice inside leg kick from Vitor Vasic. That inside leg kick, of course, doesn't cause a lot of damage on its own, but it provides invaluable feedback on range and your opponent's reaction, and it's safe. Big overhand from Luka Podkrajic. He's trying to implement a little bit of that in and out movement. Vasic seems to be targeting that thigh. Vitor got his range with a lead foot, knows where his opponent is. He's going to try and start chopping. Those little circles by the, those marks left by the cop are providing perfect targets for the low leg kicks of Vitor Vasic. bit of activity, big overhand into the clinch from Pokrajic. Vitor Vasic, beautiful defense, throwing absolutely everything. Big shots landed by Vasic. 
Kovacic stalking with bad intentions. Beautifully timed counter by Luka. But he's eating knees for his trouble. Oh! Big knee from Vasic in the clinch, and again, that's that K1 kickboxing coming into play. But Krajic really needs to do something to get out of there. There's only so many of these he can eat. Big shots, high and low from Vitor Vasic. Double underhooks from Pod Krajic. They try and initiate a, a trick takedown, but Vitor Vasic doing well that to take in for his underhooks. More knees landing. Four of them. Look at Pod Krajic in on a single leg. Does he have enough in the tank to run the pipe on it? Vasic has that chin cupped. Now he's digging for a double underhook, trying to drag his opponent up. And this has just... Limp legs out! This has just become the longest fight in the short career of Luka Pokrajic. Again, trying to get distance with that jab. A little bit of reddening up on the nose of Pokrajic. Could be from a multitude of knees that he was forced to eat there. Big one! He's coming back! Trip take down. Down, roll, scramble. scramble. And he's up. Big man showing out a fight. But Kreitz again in on that single. May look to just sneak his right knee behind the left knee of Vasic. Score a, a cheeky little trip takedown. Vasic seems to be wise to it, splits the base wisely. Calmly looks to his corner. Nice underhook established. Double underhooks and possibly a break here from Vasic. Krajcik looking for that high crotch, but it's a dangerous takedown attempt in MMA. Vasic catches, but Krajcik with the knee coming in. Slowly creeping his way out to the side, trying to bring that level of Pukrajic up. They try and hit a switch here, and again with the knee. There it is again. Those knees are the story of this fight. Pukrajic needs to be careful of dipping that head in low. He needs to protect himself in these positions. Round ends, and it was an exciting one. Phil, both fighters showing a little sign of fatigue. Big deep breaths from both men, but for me, it's Pod Krajic, who looks like the more tired fighter. As we alluded to, this is now the longest fight of his mixed martial arts career. Has never gone beyond the first round, and I think it's going to play into the game plan of Vitor Vasic a little bit. Try and take Pod Krajic into those deep rounds. Being big man, it takes the it takes the body an awful lot to pump the blood and keep oxygenated blood in those muscles. Phil, time just flows a little bit differently in the heavyweight cage. Mm. There's MMA time and then there's heavyweight time. I'd say both these fighters have done about a 10 or 15 minute fight so far. Here we see the opening stances of the round. The big shots landed by both men. But Krajic trying to use those big overhands to close the distance. But from there, it was Visor Vasic who was able to land the more dangerous strikes, the more telling strikes. Again, catching over a hand from Potkrajic. But we can see him in front of us taking big deep breaths. And here was a beautiful tie clinch, beautiful plum clinch, knees thrown right up by Vasic. Round two, baby. How much does Luka Potkrajic have left in the tank? Chance here of Luka ringing out in relatively. Luka has excellent timing. Does well in scrambles. He's going to try and do a little distance management. Land that right hand. This heavyweight title fight is, of course, three five-minute rounds. Big shot. He's throwing. Like we said in heavyweight MMA, anything can happen. Down. That is huge for Luka Potkrajic. Inside the half guard now of Vitor Vasic. Trying to transition into side control. Looking to pin that arm so those elbows are even more effective. Vasic trying to keep that half guard closed. Phil, heavyweights tend not to have a particularly 
sophisticated half guard. Some heavyweights very happy to just stay in top, start raining down blows from here. That was an incredibly diplomatic way of saying it, Kerry. Brighty points to you, sir. Bud Kreich keeping that knee nice and high. I'd like to see him perhaps try and use the instep of his left leg to try and put a little bit of pressure and scoot his right leg through. A little bit of wrist control being worked here by Vitor Vasic. I'd like to see Vasic get on his side, dig for the underhook. Not on that side, but with the left one. Body, body head from Luka Podkrajic. When you're flat on your back, you're not in half guard, you're half mounted. That's what we're seeing right here. There we go. He really needs to turn onto his right hip. Try and get that knee shield in to create a little bit of space and try and work there. Either get the guard back or use the, the soles of his feet to kick away on the hips of Podkrajic. Vasic had the underhook, but only briefly. But no, he's eating he's good shots. Knee shield up. Big ground and point landed from Podkrajic. Vasic attempting to slice that head open from the bottom. Back to half guard. Thought about almost the quasi crucifix position, which if you're flexible enough, you can get from the half guard. Referee calling for just a little bit more action. Slovenia loves action. I think this kind of position is going to be wearing just a little bit more on Vitor Vasic. But Krajic, the man on top, he's not being forced to carry any additional weight. Could even use it as a little bit of time to, to catch his breath. May just be creeping through into the mount position. I think, Phil, to make this referee happy, Luca does want to either try and transition to mount or topside control. If he postures back, he's going to end up in that knee shield. And he has to be strategic with the shots he's landing here. He doesn't want to try and punch himself out. Good work by Vasage to reclaim guard. And we've got a stand up. Luca may be struggling to get off that floor. Oh, he is. Big deep breaths taken by Podkrajic. It really comes down to who wants it more in this position? What have they got left? We're on heavyweight time, baby. It may just come down to who can land that big winging shot. Swing and a miss from Vasic. Go ahead, Luca, that's your turn. Head kick from Vasic. Oh! Coming back with the bombs! <laughs> Luka Podkrajic throwing new shots from all the way outside of the cage. I wonder, Phil, if he's playing possum just a little bit in there. Both fighters trying to catch your breath on the cage. Those shots were very much like the young lady I took to prom. They were not pretty, but they were effective. Spinning back fist attempt, a little bit labored. That's a huge knee. Big body takes a lot of oxygen. Throw that knee to the body. It needs even more oxygen. If he can land a head kick or a knee here, knee to the body. This could be the beginning of the end, Phil. Vitor Vasic seems to want it just a little bit more. But Krajic may be gassed. The corner of Vitor Vasic calling him forward. This is turning into a slugfest. Dirty, dirty knee stumps from Vitor Vasic. Two stumps in the knee. And I think very much to everyone's amazement, this fight is going into the third round, Carrick. How entertaining is the action we are seeing right now, my friend? Unbelievable. Any predictions, Phil, for what happens in round three? I think we're just going to see these gentlemen bite down on their mouthpiece and wing shots at one another. Vitor Vasic taking some seriously deep breaths, as is Luka Podkrajic. Doctor checking in on both fighters, making sure there are no health concerns in the Brave Cage. There we see just guys teeing off on one another. Phil, I do believe 
you summed up round three perfectly. It comes down to a simple question. Who wants this fight more? If I was the corner of uh, Luka Pankrajic, I'd be getting him on his feet as quick as possible. Here we go, Kerry. It could come down just the one shot, one moment. So we're giving each other a thumbs up. One moment that absolutely crystallizes everything you have done so far in your mixed martial arts. The opportunity to call yourself a world champion. Here we go. The next five minutes may take place in slow motion, but as long as they're entertaining, I am all in. WFC heavyweight title on the line. The title is vacant. The winner tonight takes it. Who's got enough left in the tank for that one? Home round one header quitter. But boom, boom, boom! Oh, waving at this! This could be a fairy tale ending for Luka Pankrajic. He smells blood in the water. to the ground, landing heavy hammer fists. Gorilla punching from top. It's like WFC went to the zoo, found a pair of gorillas, shaved them and put them inside the cage. Fighters trying to catch their breath, referee not having it. This is one of the most wildly entertaining bouts I have had the pleasure to call. There's a pass from in close guard to half. The guard's That's wide the open. That's the kind of action that we need to see in order for the referee to leave it on the ground. And the guard of Vitor Vasic is wide open. Got to see a pass that it looked like there's possibly the beginning of an attempted pass, either to mount or to top side control. There you this go. Is Fulmar. He's going to mount. What he needs to do right now is posture and land some heavy, heavy strikes. How much does he want it? There it goes. The hips are sinking. The hips are compressing into the opponent's belly, making breathing even tighter. This is an absolute war of attrition. Luka Podkraj in the mount position, trying to posture up a little bit. But we could see a little bit of transition work. Nice work from Vitor Vasic to get the half guard back. I love that big man man escape. You know how you get out of mount, you sit up. Maybe trying to get in on the Kimura, but as we know, the Kimura is a submission that requires an element of power. I'm not quite sure Vitor Vasic had it in his locker there. Just approaching the halfway point of the third and There's final There's going to be a stand-up. There it is. Oh, this is wildly entertaining. Back to banging. Who gets up first? Big men called up. Podkraic using the cage to keep him steady, winging punches at one another. It worked before. Is it going to work again? He said, no, sir. You're not taking me down. A big oh. knee. That's good. Oh. Oh. Vitor Vasic with the attempted flying knee, caught with an overhand by Podkraic. Ladies and gentlemen of the Brave Nation, are you not entertained? Tables turning. Vitor Vasic on top. Did Vitor Vasic save a little bit for the closing stances of the fight? Vasic passing the mount. Full mount, Phil. 90 seconds to go. How much? Can Vasic land? Can he earn the stoppage? Both these men are exhausted. Both these men have left a little bit of their soul inside the cage tonight. Thought we had the beginning of an, of an arm choke setup. It's more gorilla punching. Look at Podkreitz needs to get out of this position. He cannot sit here for the remainder of the fight and let Vitor Vasic tee off on him. We've got 60 seconds left, Phil. We need to see a little bit more activity from Podkreitz. We need to see him push down on a knee, get to his hip, shrimp out, spot scoot out, do something. Vitor Vasic probably doing just enough to stay here, but I think the referee wants to see just a little more. I know the crowd does. 
Coming up to the 30 second mark. Possible arm choke set up. Head on triangle. I'd like to see Vasic just a little bit lower on it. Just to try and get underneath the chin. 20 seconds left. I'm not quite sure Vitor Vasic had the squeeze left in his arms. Derek, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but we might be going to decision. 10 seconds to go. Anything can happen in mixed martial arts, and it does, and it did. Vitor Vasic may finish the fight on top. And what the a wild go to a decision. Slovenia, let's give these two warriors a big round of applause. What an incredible main event. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores about 29-28, Podgrajšek. Your next judge scores about 29-28, Vasic. And your third judge scores about 29-28 for your winner by split decision and new WFC heavyweight champion of the world from Ljubljana, Slovenia, Luka LP. Been a joyful bedlam in the Brave Cage. Muhammad the Hawk Shahid in the Brave Cage. Irish Thunder. Ladies Can and gentlemen, I am here with the new WFC heavyweight champion, Luka Podkrajic. Luka, that was an unbelievable fight. What does it mean to you to have this belt after a war with Vitor Vasic? First of all, I would say my deepest respects to uh, my opponent, Viktor Vasic. He's a fucking beast. First of all, I would like to thank you for your support to your opponent, Viktor Vasic. He was a very good guy. The other thing, I would like to thank you for your support. My award would be given to your mouth when you have a few days on the Royce Day. Thank you, that's all for me. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the new WFC heavyweight champion, Luka Podkrajšek! Ljubljana, Slovenia, you've been incredible. Thank you very, very much 
for an amazing night as we made history together with Brave Combat Federation and WFC. Father,